new folks. Should all be hearing me fine by now. I'll try not to go too long into this one. Give me a second here. All right, so anyway, today we had FOMC. And as a reminder, I know a lot of you are coming in at different times, finding this community and discovering who I am and wondering who the hell I am. <laughs> Why am I doing all this? And it's easy to get caught up into thinking, well, you know, he's probably trading FOMC today and doing the morning session and trading this and trading that. Well, actually, I wasn't. I didn't do anything this morning. FOMC is a high impact news driver that you can get caught up real easy. And as I alluded to on my tweets a little while ago before coming onto the live stream here, that in 1993, I blew out a few accounts that year. That was my second year of trading. I had just a single day event of trading in 1992, my very first soiree into uh, trading. These old 50 year old bones are cracking. And I took a few months off and then started in 1993 and came to a shocking discovery that certain days of the month weren't that good for what I was trying to do, which was guess. <laughs> so as a young 20 year old, I was baptized in the fires of manipulation. And I got really interested in trying to figure out what that day was going to do. And I subscribed to all kinds of things back then. You know, I bought books. I signed up to services. 900 numbers that were going to tell you what that report was going to do the, the night before. <laughs> it never panned out. It was always a resulting blown account or major drawdown. Or just simply never getting the fill. Early on, I didn't have any experience where it was positive trading these types of days. But I got caught up with thinking I was going to figure it out, you know. And I wanted to try to capture all the moves, like the up, the down, and know exactly what was going to happen. And years later, I discovered that I didn't need to do those trading days at all. And then later on, I'm talking like 10 years later, I discovered how these algorithms that are utilized in these marketplaces, how they implement certain things that I've made, you know, discussions about over the years in recent time. So you can kind of like see what it is that they do and how they behave and it's not important for me to try to trade in the morning. I mean, I can. It had a really nice fair value gap, and it performed very well. And there's going to be times where it simply does that, and that's also what caught me when I was first starting how to you know, learn how to trade in 1992, 1993. I believed that I could trade every swing high and low if I just figured out what those other guys knew. And the other guys at the time... I was thinking were the people that were writing books, <laughs> the same books that were selling for $20 and $25. They were going to give me the secrets to the marketplace, making it so accessible for the low, low price of what would cost really for a two liter bottle of soda and a large pizza from Papa John's now. That's not a plug for Papa John's, by the way. <laughs> Oh, he's got ads now. He's got he's doing ads now in, in his Twitter space. The um, the move today. I didn't get back into my house until good grief. It was like minute or two right before two o'clock, my local time. And 
I sat down with my youngest son. I told him to watch what happens. And I was expecting it to drop down, which it did. And then I told him, I said, look, it's going to run up air and take out the relative equal highs and go back to a bearish breaker. Now, he doesn't know what a breaker is, and I didn't have the time to point to it. But if you look at your five-minute chart, you'll see that the rally up, it went right into that bearish breaker. Once it did that, then it started to sell off. And then I set the recording up so that way you could see me do the live execution. If there's going to be a heavy impact news driver, like FOMC, something to that effect, you want to kind of like limit your trading to the 3 o'clock hour, your local time. Because what you'll have is the added benefit of a normal day that, say, any other day except for FOMC or, you know, rate announcement type thing that usually releases around 2 o'clock and then you have to follow up conference that is 2.30 in the afternoon. So FOMC is really like a two-stage event. And it's likened to many times where I refer to like a terrorist. Okay, a terrorist can take a bomb and put it on the road okay, or a market. And when that small chart is off, it creates excitement and everybody's going to run away from where that bomb is going off. It's too much, right? So they're going to run from that end of the market or road and when you get to the opposite end, a larger charge is set off. There's penalties. And if you look at the price today, that's exactly what takes place. And that's also what I talk about in the financial mentorship, where I'm referring to afternoon trades and touch on FMC. Everything you saw today was already online. So it's not like I'm creating a new yarn, okay? I'm not spinning new web. I'm basically telling you what I've already told you and executed today. With those air printables, with 4K clarity, it's real hard to argue kind of stuff, folks. Live executions, okay, granted, there are some of you that are saying, you know, will really satisfy all the trolls. Nothing's going to satisfy the trolls, folks. Okay, <laughs> nothing's nothing's going to satisfy them because that's the only way they're getting traffic. So no matter what I do, if I keep a dialogue going with these types of things, it just makes them relevant. Okay, interested in making trolls relevant. So, but the idea or argument is, is if you just did this for a week, if you did just, you know, live sessions every day, traded the market, called the market, did this, did that, it would quiet all the trolls. No, it wouldn't. It wouldn't do that at all. And I'm not interested in doing that. And I know you don't like hearing that, but I already proved enough for you to go in and find your own results, find your own proof. Once you have that, then, you know, that's why I'm here. If I wanted to be a big celebrity and having people follow everything I say on YouTube live streams and such, I would do that. But that's not my interest. I kind of like want to wind down. Like I'm, I'm kind of like giving you my farewell. Like this is, we're at the end of this. Okay. And what that means is, is I kind of like want to try to backpedal into my privacy again. And I know that doesn't sound fun. It doesn't sound, you know, exciting or happy. But I promise by the end of this year, before we even get into December, you'll have more than you'll ever need. And will I do YouTube videos? Yeah, I'll probably put up a couple. You know, I'm not going to be like this, obviously. But you don't need these big FOMC days. You don't need me calling the moves. You don't need those things. And if you think that, it's just simply because you haven't been doing it long enough. And you're growing comfortable. You're getting real comfortable hearing me tell you things that make you feel good, that inspire you. And there's enough videos where I've done that. I've done, you don't need that. You need to roll your sleeves up and study. And these things will come to you. But I made a reference today, or this evening, how in... 1993, where I got slapped around a couple times. If I'm not mistaken, I think I blew three accounts that year. And they were all FMC days. <laughs> and I didn't learn my lesson the first time. I didn't learn the lesson the second time. And to be honest with you, I really didn't learn the lesson on the third one either. Because I tried to do the same stupid stuff the very next month. 
with even less was impatient about trying to save up to get to put in the account. So caught up in the excitement of seeing moves like this, especially if you're coming home from school or waking up in your local time zone and seeing what transpired over the time where FOMC hit the marketplace. And you get this fear that that was the only move that could have ever catapulted you into profitability or, or successful trader. And it's all about what, what I mentioned in the last Twitter space. You're trying to condense your entire career into one transaction, one trading day, one event. And that is a problem. And that is like the largest testimony to someone that is brand new. Because I did that with every single trade. When I first started, every single trade in my first three years, in the 1992, 1993, 1994, they were all make it or break it trading you know, individual Olympic feats. I was trading with the maximum leverage, the largest trading position I could put on, and literally just static price alone would have taken me out. And you can't trade like that on a day like this because if you give your neck to the marketplace, it'll cut it. It'll cut it and you don't matter to this marketplace. Like you're, you're, irre you're irrelevant. All of us are. There's so much money to be taken on days like this. And that's why you see such a wide swing up and down. Up, and then the real move takes place. You know, there's nothing bullish about e you know, equities right now. Stocks are not in a position to rally. There's nothing in these markets that would warrant being bullish holding, you know, buying long, trying to catch a bottom. No, there's nothing there, folks. Let's just talk about it briefly in the scope of fundamentals, okay? We have soaring inflation, which they wanted to die. It only inched up a little bit, according to, to Biden. <laughs> Interest rates are rising. That makes it very difficult for equities to rally. But usually the stock market doesn't like higher interest rates. And we're in traditionally the September and October time frame usually starts to see the market drop down. Now, generally, that's an exciting time. And I teach, as you'll see in a couple of weeks, where I talk about stock trading and how you can go in and pick stocks and such. You don't have to be a Forex trader under me. You don't have to be a futures trader under me. You don't have to be a bond trader under me. You can trade stocks. You can do stock options. And I talk about how if you're going to focus on that asset class, there are certain times of the year. And if you focus on don't trade a lot, I believe and I think that you'll see that there's some validity to what I'm about to show you in a couple weeks when we get to that stage or that month of core content, you'll see that there's opportunities there as well. So I like to see the September, October lows, maybe in the first week or so in November, sometimes you can do that as well. There's fall low, and there's usually some kind of accumulation that takes place. And I'm going to tell you, folks, I just don't see that this year. You know, I don't don't know where the low is, but one of my friends, he, apparently he was talking to somebody he knew or he flips property with and has done business flipping properties in real estate. They buy properties in distress and they put a little bit of them and they end up selling them for more money. This guy calls me a couple of days ago and I don't know him from Adam, you know. <laughs> He said, hey, you know, I know so and so, our mutual friend, apparently. And I ended up talking to him for like almost 90 minutes. And I know he was recording the phone call because, you know, you hear this little beep like every 30 seconds. So I'm not sure what that was all about, but you know, I gave him a show. So he's like, you know, I've been trading stock options, you know, for a number of years. And so and so tells me, you know, you've been doing this, and I'd like to pick your brain, basically. 
So I, I can't give him a little bit of time only because he mentioned our, our mutual friend. All right. So when I say mutual friend, it's just, you know, somebody that um familiar with. We didn't go to school or anything like that. He's not a, um, a market person, something to that effect. It's just, you know, another entrepreneur out there that uh, I'm friends with. And this guy says to me, he goes, um, you know, what, what do you think is going to happen in the marketplace? <laughs> so I said, um, well, let's go down a checklist of things here. Interest rates are higher. Inflation's higher. Uh, consumer sentiment sucks. You know, things aren't really good right now. Everything is too high. Um, I've spent you know, tons of money on automobiles, and I know I overpaid, but I don't care. You know, my kids and family members they need vehicles, so you know I can't I can't get them to be cheaper than what they are. So you got to pay what the market price bears. So it is what it is. So I went through this whole list of things, explaining why I personally don't think that there is a there is a price that can stock or buy stock right now. And wide is you know pretty wide open. And so I guess he kept pushing and pushing on it. That's him. I said, you know, S and P twenty nine hundred. There you go. So do I think that twenty nine hundred is going to happen, like? in the next week or so because he was expecting me to, you know, co-sign on this month. Like, he wanted to see something like that. In a week, he's talking about how he's going to buy really, really far out of the months, you know, and <laughs> my, that time horizon is like February for me. Like, I, it can go there sooner. It could fail and never go there, too. So just be mindful what I'm saying. I'm just talking off the cuff, talking to somebody I've never met before. But he basically, you know, tried to pin me down what do I expect? So we have like a perfect storm. You know, we have a perfect storm of all these things happening. You know, you have the whole global reset thing, and that's another discussion on another time, but all these things are in place. We have midterm elections in the U.S., all kinds of tomfoolery going on. You know, they're trying to get a civil war started, whether you like it or not. It's, they're doing everything they can to stoke the fires of uh, – division so nothing here there isn't one thing that bodes well for stocks going higher it's all lower and if we start seeing days where the circuit breakers start kicking in and what that means is if the averages drop down a percentage then they stop trading for a little while and then they cool down the market they're intended to do that but what it does is it actually creates more panic and fear, and that's just going to speed up the process. And then on Sundays, we're going to start seeing really extreme gaps, those being lower. That's what I foresee coming. That's what I see happening, and it's just going to feed on itself, and that fear and that anxiety, all those types of things, it's just going to accelerate. So long story short, I'm not bullish on stocks. I'm not bullish on the stock market, the averages, or anything like that. But there's a lot of things that happen in days like FOMC where you get stuck on this idea, like this is the only big moves that can happen. You know, I got to trade non-farm payroll. I got to trade FOMC, or I can't make money. And I'm going to tell you, how when I was eventually making some money early on, still not really knowing what I was doing, and we're talking like 1994, like the first part of 1994, where I was trying to go in and engage these events. I wanted these big days because when I was chasing as a new trader, having no real idea when to buy as the market's dropping, I wanted to see it rally. And you see these guys on YouTube, they're out here today talking about how, yeah, well, you know, this market after FOMC and it starts running, it's tearing off. I'm calling the buy. I'm calling the sell. I'm trying to do this. I'm getting all my subscribers. We did this. We did that. You chase price. Congratulations. I did that too a lot when I was 20 years old. And these big ranges that explode and keep going and going and going. These are the same days where traders will go on Twitter 
you are my students. Don't think that I don't know this. Listen carefully because I'm going to start calling you guys out. If you say, I took the same trade, I see T high five. I'm, notice I'm not liking those posts because I'm going to be honest with you. I think most of you are full of shit. I think you're lying. Okay. I think you're lying to yourself and you're lying to other people and me. Because if you did it, you show it. I, anybody else that does it, they show it. So don't wrap yourself up with bullshit. Nobody wants to hear bullshit. Nobody wants to see bullshit. And if you chase that feeling of providing that opportunity for a dopamine hit because someone like me or anyone else likes your post when you say, I took the same trade as ICT, but you've done nothing but draw lines on the chart or not even done that. You just say, I took the same trade. I can't co-sign anything like that. You know, I'm not trying to be rude to any of you, okay? But I try to be as real as I possibly can and hold myself to a standard that is above everyone else. So if I'm going to tell you I did something, I'm going to show you I did something. If I tell you it's live, it's live. If I tell you, hey, you know, I messed up, you know, here's what I did wrong. I didn't do it to, to stunt and say, oh, yeah, look, I'm going to pretend I took a loss. I did something wrong. OK. Um, but when you see these big moves like this, okay, you have these big rally days or decline days, you can go in and chase price looking at a one minute chart or a five minute chart. And then what will happen is, is the examples shared on social media and the folks that like to champion themselves as, you know, successful traders or whatnot, they'll go to an hourly chart and they'll show the hourly candle. And it'll look like they sold the high that hourly candle. And then when they got out with one or two points, <laughs> if that, then that's the exit. But it looks like it's at the farthest extreme of that one hour candle. So it, on the casual view, someone just going through and seeing that and saying, hey, high five, I'm killing it with ICT, you know, every week, every day, and it won't stop. I, I just can't. I can't. I can't like those kind of posts, folks, okay, because I know that shit goes on in our house and everywhere else, and I've never been a supporter of that. I've never been a supporter of that. I've never championed that stuff. So around here, we don't blow smoke, okay? We hopefully don't need to do those things anymore. So if you didn't take any action in, in the day, then you took no action. There's no shame in that. I've told you not to do anything today. Not because there isn't an opportunity, but the majority of you aren't experienced. You have no idea what the hell you're doing. Now, coming into a marketplace, thinking, wow, this is going to be a big move day. I'm going to go in there and disregard everything ICT said because, you know, I might get lucky today. Or I'm going to go on somebody else's live stream and watch what they're doing and get caught up in the frenzy. Let's go chase a market. And when you chase it, it's already moved so far. The worst thing can happen is these jokers get a little piece of that move. When you have the likelihood of a retracement on a fast day like this, where it can move 20, 30 handles against you like that, then go where you thought it was going to go. I mean, do you have the ability to sit through $50,000 in fake MT4 losing trades? Do you, I mean, can you do that with your live account? Because you're going to try to chase somebody else doing that? I'm trying to protect you from stuff like that. But these guys that do this and they say, look at this right here. This is the move that took place. This is this is what we were looking at. This is what we were going after. Everybody knew it. Why didn't you buy near the low? Why didn't you sell near the high? How much drawdown was you open to? Where's the execution at? 
what was the rationale behind it except for just chasing excitement? See, in the early part of 1994, I had two instances where FOMC worked for me and I chased the price. And I got such a small, insignificant price movement in the grand scheme of things. But because I left that day with a net gain, well, guess what? My shit didn't stink no more. I could walk around, parade around, because guess what I just learned how to do? I kicked FOMC's ass. <laughs> I'll see you next week, bitch. No, it didn't work. It did not work. Okay, because what it did, it gave me this false sense of security and confidence that had no merit behind it. None. I convinced myself that this small little scrap, the, the least of the meat, was enough reason for me to go back in. Because, hey, if I got lucky, those two instances, you know, what they say, the third time's a charm. <laughs> oh, yeah. This time, the meat was my ass, okay? And it was taken off. I didn't learn my lesson. I did not learn my lesson until that one. That one said, okay, I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. I've been doing this too little of time and not consistent enough. I need to put more time behind what it is I'm trying to do. And these days, just move too fast. Maybe I'll never be able to do anything with them, but at least for right now, put it on the back burner. That... Move me to what? Non-farm payroll. Non-farm payroll, well, there's something different there. There was nothing different there. Okay, It was the same opportunity to have my ass removed from me. So because I lived this, I endured it for real. Okay, I have fortunes lost because of this dumb shit. I'm trying to spare you and give your career the greatest opportunity to survive it by not doing these dumb things. These dumb things that make it feel like it's the lottery. Yes. If you get, and it moves in your favor, which you will not hold the entire move. You're not going to hold it to the entire move. And the guys out there pretending that they caught this big monster move, they're not holding the entire time. They're getting, maybe, if they're getting it at all with a real count, they're getting small pieces of it. And they don't have any rationale behind why they're doing it. They're just chasing cars. And the problem with that, stray dogs chasing cars sometimes get ran the fuck over. Now, I don't know where you've been for the last, I don't know, nine months or so. But I have been putting out information and content and concepts and structure to how you should conduct yourself as a devoted. You should not be in these types of markets trading with live funds, period. End of story, you ain't ready. I don't give a shit if that model that I gave you on YouTube is delivering for you and you've won FTMO accounts and you're making real money with your FTMO funded account or you're trading with your live account that you've put your own money in. You should not be touching FOMC days, period. Shouldn't be doing it. Take a look at today, folks. I asked this on Twitter earlier. I said, be honest. If you traded today, do you think you would have lost? I'm telling you, 99% of you would have. And that doesn't mean that I'm a terrible mentor. It doesn't mean that my concepts don't work. It doesn't mean that you're a bad student. It just means that the probabilities of you, any of you, in this class that started in January this year, all this free content and all the stuff that I've been providing, you're not ready. And I've had this happen every year when I was doing private mentorship. I'd have these guys and gals come in and they get real excited about something they just learned. Okay. And they had the benefit of me calling when the market's going to go before it happens. I don't do that anymore, folks, by the way. But they seen how consistent I was. And they now seen a technique or an approach or a concept. And they think, wow, he's saying don't go in to these big days, but I have seen these market moves tear off. And if I just get a small piece of that, man, that'll really help me with that credit card. You start putting all these stupid ass ideas together and then 
not how, man, I want to confess to him. <laughs> I'm going to send him an email, but he never fucking emails me back. I can never get a hold of this guy. I, and it's true. Most people cannot get a response from me. And it's not because I'm an asshole or a dick or trying to be an arrogant, pompous prick. There, nobody you know, has, you know, an opportunity to hear from me. It's just there's too many of you that try to reach out to me. That's all. That's all. And because I can't do all of that all day long, most of the time, email me is the worst thing in the world. But these folks that suffer this kind of thing, they want to be assured that, hey, look, you know, I made a mistake today. You know, maybe you blew your account. Maybe you lost your funded account. Maybe you completely did your ass. And you just need to be encouraged. You need to be reminded, hey, look, you know, can I come back from this? Yes. Fuck's sake, man. I literally, <laughs> I don't give a shit I lost my accounts in the beginning. You know, 20 years old, I'm glad I learned how to trade when I was 20. Because that arrogance that I had and the obsessive compulsiveness, that tenacity of fuck you, you're not beating me, okay? You're kicking the shit out of me right now, but I'm going to get back up. You're not keeping me down. You have to have that mindset as a trader. And maybe that's not the nicest way of putting it. I know some of you don't like to hear swear words and I know you like to correct me and such. But, you know, folks, listen, we're all adults here, okay? And we're talking about things that really hit hard emotionally, psychologically. And I'm not going to sit here and pretend, okay, you some sweet, sugary, coated bullshit. So you can walk away feeling good. You need to have these types of reminders because it's too easy to talk yourself into doing dumb shit. Think about it. it it's not limited to trading. It's everything. So don't these days and think to yourself, wow, you know, big moves like this, you know, I might get lucky and even catch a small piece because these big moves are sometimes forgiving for dumb shit. Mistakes that are made on these days, and you're caught on side. That means you're on the right side of the marketplace, not because of skill to it. You have no idea why you did it, but you're on there, and it starts running off in your favor, and it scares the shit out of you. Oh man, I've never seen two hundred dollars in my account before. Boom, and then just get out of that, and then it rips even more. And you could have made what fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars. So now what are you doing? Shit, let me get back in there. Like it's going to give you two thousand more, and then it does what? roars against you, runs you right over like a stray dog chasing a car. So you're left demoralized, regretting everything. You've probably blown your account or done such a damage to it. Now you're scared shitless. You're paralyzed. You're afraid to take the next trade. And you read these folks, and I feel sorry for them because they're they're trying to get these FTMO accounts too fast. Oh, man, I went through drawdown. And I have, I have 13 days. The fellow that sent it to me today, he knows who I'm talking about. And I'm not beating up on you, okay? But if you blow this, that's not the end of it, dude. You're just trying to do it too quick. You're rushing. You're rushing like something magical is happening once you get that funded account. It's going to get fucking harder. <laughs> it's going to get fucking harder. Hello? Now you have the money. When that money goes up and down, that's success and failure in a monetary sense, whereas in a demo or paper, eh, it don't mean shit. You give it the value based on your ego and your pride. Pride and ego is not equity. That's emotion. That's what that is, folks. That's emotion. And so many of you don't realize when you first start, you're trading emotionally. You're trading with emotional equity. And you think that that is limitless. No, it's not. Because you can trade yourself right into a position of insolvency. Wait a minute. How can I do that if I'm trading with fake money? Scare yourself into thinking that this is never going to work for you and you'll quit. See, I quit dozens of times when I was younger. I called it quitting, but what I was doing is I was just saving up more money to go back in again because that bug bit me 
and come hell or high water, I was going to swing through these markets like Ken Parker and nothing was going to hold. But some of you aren't wired that way. And I understand. But you're also doing dumb shit trying to do things that you are not capable of doing. And you may not like to hear people say that, even me. Like, it's discouraging when you talk to me. I had people in my mentorship literally tell me in emails, I don't like when you talk to us like that. Come to us nice and encourage us. Yeah, that's, that's, that's nice. It, there's a time for that. You paid. <laughs> you paid to learn how to do this and overcome these problems. So when I give it to you, Mr. Receive It, it isn't going to feel good. That's the intended purpose. It's for you to feel uncomfortable. So you don't go in that again thinking this is normal. It's not normal to keep doing those things. And these days, like FOMC, invite that, ter that terrible opportunity for you to sit around and just think that it's going to be easier on these days because there's a lot of movement. No, you need to understand there's a whole lot of fucking risk on these days. Like you can do so much damage to yourself in such a short span of time. Look how fast, folks. Listen, your chart. Pull up a one minute chart and look how fast E-mini, S&P, and NASDAQ free felt right when FOMC uh, started at 2 o'clock. You really think you can fucking trade that right now? You, you, th you think you have the skill set to do that right now? You don't. And you're not getting fucking filled. I sat there and scrolled through all of these clowns, man. Yeah, look at my fill here. You didn't get filled on a real fucking account, okay? You're not getting filled. You're not <laughs> you are not getting filled at the 2 o'clock hour at the high. You're not. You can do that with a demo. But that's not happening with a live account. That's not happening for and these people that do that stuff. I don't even know why they even bother doing that shit. Like it's not believable. You can't prove you did it. That picture of you putting the arrow there or whatever the hell it is that you've done to make it look like you've done it, that's not happening, man. Anybody that's ever traded with live accounts knows that you are not getting filled like that. Period. You're not. And people like us see through that bullshit. And I see some of you in our community trying that shit. I'm just being polite, not saying anything about it. This is probably the first time you heard about it here. But I'm doing it so that way you just stop. We don't need fakes, okay? You shouldn't be championing these fake ideas. Hold yourself to a higher standard. I hold myself to a higher standard. Unless I show you I've done something, assume it didn't happen. And I come to you with receipts every day. Sometimes I don't do something right. Sometimes the other day, trading view and AMP just didn't do what I was expecting to see happen. That took me completely out of the game. But like I said that day, I ain't worried about it. I mean, this shit repeats. Look what happened today. Made up with what I would have done yesterday in interest, too. You can't make these impulsive decisions to trade on these big high impact days thinking that that's going to be the saving grace to your success. Like this is the only way you're going to make it. No. I mean, think about what I've done for my son. I told him, I said, look, you can do very well with four to five points. Just four or five handles. 16 to 20 ticks, okay? I see a lot of people asking, you know, how many ticks are in a point or how many points are in a tick, vice versa. One handle is one point. Each point, ES, is 50 bucks. There's four ticks in that point. $12.50 a tick. All you're trying to get is four to five, or, you know, four to five points in the morning session or the afternoon. If you just do that one time a week, that's an extra grand a month. Less commissions, obviously. Now, what would that do for you? Some of you, that would put you in a really sweet spot. What if you did it twice a week? That's a mortgage payment. 
maybe a mortgage payment, and maybe a utility bill. And you're not doing a whole lot to get that, but you got to wait. You can't be trading things like this. Don't let me convince you that this is what you should be doing because I ripped the tax apart today. So don't, don't think that that's something you're going to walk around with because you find videos, you study, you got an FTML account, you're fine, you've been making money, but you're going to match FMC. Folks, these days can still burn me. I can do it wrong. I can do everything that would look rough by my rules, and these days could have manual intervention rip my ass apart. Is he hearing? So don't walk around thinking that you're going to be able to come in here anytime you want and FOMC this need to you. No. There's going to be a day where you try that shit and it removes your head cleanly. You have to respect the risk. You have to. Because this, the broker's not going to say, hey, look, are you sure you want to take a trade today? Are you sure you want to put that much leverage behind this trade? I mean, because I was looking for the last fall trade you took, you know, I don't know if it's a good fucking idea. I'm not looking out for this interest. And I know some of you don't like to hear these types of messages, and some of you just have entertainment. But it's important for you, if you're trying to do these types of things, to know that it does not result in longevity. It ends with a very short career and regret. And because you're going to want to do this, but you won't be able to. Because you have created such a toxic deal of yourself as a trader. You paralyzed yourself with fear. You won't be able to connect trade. Because you think, now think about this, what I'm about to say. Okay. Put down the Xbox controller. Pull over if you're driving. For a second, okay. You think these days are going to be the answer to all of your problems. You think that this is the, the last bash of big movement. It's not. See, these days, they're designed to smash participants. They're designed to clean the markets, both sides sell side and the buy side. It's designed to do that. That's what they use these days for. Sweeping up on both sides of the marketplace. Cleaning up. You can't. You cannot go into this thinking FOMC is going to be the basis of your entire career. Because I guarantee if you do that, you're not going to have the results you're looking for. You're going to have a terrible equity curve you're going to have fear, and that fear that you now have adopted because of participating in these days where you're not equipped. You don't have the skill set yet. Now, I'm not saying you can't have the skill set. Obviously, I've shown it, but it took me a long time. And it, will it take you the same amount of time? I don't know. You might get it faster. But I can tell you none of you are ready to do that. None of you are ready to do that. But you're going to trade these days and develop fear and anxiety because the market moves real quick against you. And now here's what's going to happen tomorrow or Friday or next week. There's going to be a bread and butter setup. And you might have the courage to get in there and take that trade. That might happen. You might get in there. You might place your stop loss in there like you're supposed to. You may put your limit order in there, and you might be marking off where you're going to take your partials. Everything is as it should be. But then it's going to move one handle against you. And what's going to happen is your subconscious is going to revert back to what? A day like today where you did something stupid, and you put a trade on, and this son of a bitch took off running 15, 20 handles real quick 
And you're going to think normal, everyday, bread and butter trading opportunity is going to have characteristics like that. Now, mind you, it only moved against you. But your subconscious is going to say, oh, shit. Your asshole is going to start puckering. Man, your palms are going to start sweating all instantaneously. Because you're going to think and expect 15 handles roaring against your position. When that is so unlikely to happen. But you're thinking, you're thinking to yourself that, hey, I've experienced this. So I'm hurting. I don't want to be in that situation again. I don't want to get caught up in a move like that. So that one handle or four ticks of drawdown in your trade when your stop loss is four ticks or I'm sorry, four points. What are you going to do? You're going to get scared of the trade. You're going to get paralyzed with fear with something that is not going to happen like you expect it in terms of magnitude. It could come back and stop you out, yes. But you're going to start thinking, oh, no, man. This thing's going to do what I saw it do on that FOMC day that I was trying to trade. Because you filled yourself up with toxic experiences. That's why I tell you to paper trade or taper it for days. Because it'll give you experience where it doesn't resonate with a fear or excitement because you didn't make any money and you didn't lose any money. You're getting experience reading the tape. And these guys come in. You don't read the tape when you're using the phone. Get the market. Get the market is full of shit. That stuff. Okay. So, but I'll have to spark some arts there too. I don't give a fuck. But you're going to try to do these things on days where it's not likely to have these big step moves, these extrapolations, you know, one sidedness. And you're going to be fearful that you're offside doing the wrong side of the trade for sure. And now it moves against you four ticks, one handle, one point in the S&P. And you don't trust that your stop loss is in the right spot. And you're thinking, man, this is going to tear off. And what do you do? You can't handle it. You can't walk away from the screens because you have paid your stop loss to do its job. That's what, you, that's what you're doing. When you put that order in there, it's to do its job, to protect you. If the market goes to that position or higher when you're short, get me out immediately. Now, there's gap risk always. The market could gap, and that's what you're thinking might happen because you experienced something that you weren't prepared for by trading FOMC days or non-farm payroll days, and you've seen these big, wild, crazy little moves that, well, I shouldn't say little, these big moves that happen real quick, sudden, these dramatic repricings higher and lower. And now you're coming into the average, everyday, run of bread and butter setup day, and you're going to get scared out of it. It's going to shake you out of it. And you know what's going to happen next. It goes right to where your target would have been. So now, you, you, not the market, you beat yourself again. You're starting to flog yourself, punishing yourself, because you have done something foolishly in the past, trading in environments that you should not have fucking ever touched, now, it's not because you didn't know better. I told you. And every single fucking month, I tell you, don't trade. Don't do it. But, like my own kids sometimes, don't do this. Turn your head. What are they doing? The fucking shit you told them not to do. You have to learn from that pain and then, okay, disconnect it because characteristics of an FOMC day, a rate announcement day, that's not the same characteristic that would be seen in other, you know, market day. But because you're not experienced, you're neophyte, and you've now created toxic thinking because of rushing into a market move or day like FOMC or non-farm payroll, you have 
poisoned your perception of how price is going to deliver. And I know some of you are thinking, damn, this, this guy nailed me, man. That's exactly what the fuck happened to me. And I never really understood it until now. Yes, I've done this to myself before. And it takes a lot of undoing to correct it. That means that's why I tell you these things. That's why I make the videos the way I do. That's why I talk to you the way I talk to you. Because I have lived this shit, folks. I've lived it. I know how hard it is to fix the problems. But some of you just simply want to do the shit and like, hey, you know, and I used this before, but you ever seen the movie Jaws? They're sitting on the boat. And they're all like, hey, where'd you get that scar from? You know, where'd you get this? Where'd you get that? And each one of them are trying to top the next guy. Oh, yeah, I got this one because a tank ran over me in Vietnam. Oh, yeah, well, this one did this one. And that's, you know, you all want to be able to say, yeah, I, I suffered like ICT. Like that's some kind of a fucking club you want to be a part of. I don't want you to have the same kind of shit that I went through. Why would you want to do that? Don't you want to be the person that said, you know what? I listened to everything he said, avoided the shit he said to avoid, and I'm doing it better, and I don't have any issues. Man, that's what I want to hear. That's why I'm mentoring. I'm mentoring like that because I want to hear a student say that. I've not had one student do that yet. Hundreds of thousands of students, not one of them has come forward and said, you know what? <laughs> you know, I listened to all your shit, and uh, I, I don't want to go through that. I'm going to listen to the lessons that are going to be the most uncomfortable ones to listen to because guess what? That's the stuff that's going to break me. If you're going to spend the time sitting there talking about how you lost your money, your ass, you, you just couldn't get past a certain thing psychologically and it caused you a problem, I'm going to really pay attention to that. You know, when I listened, well, not listen, but when I was reading those uh, Jack Swagger books, uh, Market Wizards. <laughs> Again, I mentioned it before, like there's nothing in those books that tell you how to trade. But what's fascinating is, is they'll talk about their experience and what they were feeling, what they felt, and what it was like to overcome those barriers or periods of drawdown, or maybe they failed and what they had to do to get beyond it. That to me is fascinating, and I really wish, like those guys that, uh, like uh, what's his name, Cam, the Trader Nut Podcast thing i was on i don't know when i don't know what year i was on there but um when he talks to these individuals i wish to ask questions like you know how hard is it for you to come back from periods of drawdown i don't want to give i don't really give a fuck how much you made i don't care that doesn't interest me I don't care what your little system does, what your pattern is, what indicators, what style of trading. I don't give a shit, okay? I don't even care if it's my stuff. What I would love to hear is how you engage yourself because you're that person, okay? It's not the market maker that's getting you. person in the mirror. You've done your own ass. You did that. And many times it's by doing the stuff that we're talking about here tonight. You're trying to trade in market environments that you're not equipped to do. And you don't know what it's like to make the decision to get out of the trade. Or how about this? If you're in a fast market and you know you're offside, do you know when you can hurry up and close out and flip it and go the other direction? I've done that before. I did it. And all it did was open up more questions from the people that saw me do it. And there were people from baby pips. And there was no way I could answer it where they would understand because it takes experience. And they don't like that answer. You don't like that answer. When How long do you think it's going to take for me to do this and do that? I don't know. I don't know. Because you're all doing something. All, all of you are doing something individually that's holding you back. I don't give a shit how you're doing right now. You all are doing something that's having a negative impact on your growth. And that's why it's important that you journal. And you don't realize what those things are until you go back and look at what it is you're doing. You keep doing things over and over again, and they're having a negative response. The results are showing less than optimal. Mind that. Figure out what it is you're doing. And it might be something as simple as, you know, anxiety about something that you've endured somewhere else. It may not be rooted in the marketplace. It may be something, 
you know, in your personal relationship. Maybe you think that your relationship is on the rocks and, or maybe it's not, but because things have changed in the bedroom or at home, something doesn't feel right and you're just bothered by it. That kind of stuff can materialize and manifest itself in your decision making in the marketplace because you'll come to these marketplaces like a, a, a way of escaping living a, a different life. And sometimes you can talk yourself into thinking you're James Bond, walk out here and find out, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, you're nothing like that. And uh, you need a stretcher. So when you have these poor decisions to come in here and try to find a, a way of fixing yourself and feeling good. The worst thing you can do is try to do that on a day like today, because you're not going to fix yourself. Okay. You're not going to fix yourself on a day like this. It's going to do a lot of harm, more harm than you realize. And it's not going to be noticeable to you until you trade after this day. Like you're not, even if you made money, Okay, let's close this one with this idea. Let's say you did something today and you went short. You went short and you had the wherewithal to hold on to it a little bit longer than you normally would. And you got a windfall victory. Okay. The toxic aspects of this type of day when you don't have proper experience doing all what is I'm teaching you. These ideas will, again, manifest themselves in your typical bread and butter day. What will happen is you'll get into a move. You'll do all things right. Stop loss will be where it's supposed to be. Your limit order to take profits will be where it's supposed to be. You're following the model. And all of a sudden, it does a really quick running right to it. Oh, shit. This is that same move. This is that same move. Oh, damn. This is the same move I just did with FOMC two weeks ago when I made $6,000 and I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Guess what? I just caught a tiger by the tail. Fuck that limit order. Let's take that off. We're going to watch how this thing just melts today. Oh, it's melting. <laughs> it's melting your fucking face off. It's going right down to where you thought it was going to go. Maybe a point or two beyond that. And it's right about then you're grabbing the calculator thinking, okay. I do this and hold it to that. My wife stays out of my office right now. My kids go play Xbox and I ain't got to worry about this and turn, turn the TV off and the sports. I'm going to focus on this chart. I'm going to stare at it just like ICT fucking says. And all of a sudden, boom. It turned. It's starting to go up. But now what you're going to do. Oh, okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's the fucking fair value gap. Okay. All it's going to do is give me another fair value gap. It's okay. Just relax. Just relax. Because. Yeah, I've been here before. It's just like FOMC. When it's not FOMC, you've talked yourself out of a perfectly framed trade, but now you're expecting it to deliver the same way luck rewarded you on an FOMC day. So you brought a positive result and experience with stupidity. Let's call it what it is. You're trying to trade in a fast market with no experience. And you got rewarded for it. Worst thing in the world could happen. Now you're bringing in that mindset in A that isn't likely to do that. So you abandon sound thinking, sound logic, the model. And now because your pride and ego, and what if it really does do like FOMC and it tears off 50 handles in my favor? I can't wait to go on Twitter with that. <laughs> but it turns on you and goes right up to your stop loss. The whole time, you're justifying every bit of the run to your stop. Because you have poisoned your perception of price. See, these are the reasons why I talk to you the way I talk to you like this. And you don't like it. Because it doesn't give you that puffed up feeling. But these are the ones that matter the most. These types of discussions, these lectures, these woodshed moments. These are the very things that I did my own ass with. Period. I did these things. Dozens of times. 
and it resulted in blown accounts drawdown that took weeks to fix i've done those things folks and honestly it, you don't need to do it there, you can do all these things that gets to consistency and ability and never experience these types of things it's possible i'm telling you it's possible but you don't want to listen and it's frustrating to me as a mentor because like i'm not lying to you i told you like dude <laughs> i've blown accounts before i've lost money doing these types of things why would you want to try to do something like this like it's not a challenge <laughs> it's not it's not a uh like here we're gonna do a new TikTok challenge let's start with uh trading on an fomc day over leveraging and uh you know this is swing it and see what happens that's not something you want to subscribe to. That's not what you want to be doing. So I'm not sure if matches, you know, if a message like this reaches any of you. Okay. I'm not sure if it resonates with any of you or if it just sounds like I'm trying to piss in your cornflakes, but this is the stuff that matters. And I know, you know, it, it, to see the stuff that you're learning and me executing and showing it, and that's great. Okay, and I do it to encourage you, but I'm not trying to invite you to trade in these days. And hopefully, with this discussion here, you keep things balanced. Yes, I can do these things. That doesn't mean that you can do it. It doesn't mean you can't learn to do it eventually. I'm just saying that let's be a voice of reason right now. You aren't ready to do what you saw me do today. You know it. I know it. And anybody else that knows you as a trader knows that you can't do that either. So don't look at this as a challenge like, okay, bet. I'm going to do it now next month. Don't do that. Don't. You're trying to create every possible scenario to hold yourself back. They're perfect little distractions to success. You know, it said in all the books I've ever read, you know, there's a lot of toxic thinking. That all of us do it, okay? And there was a survey that was done, and I don't know how much validity truth there is to it, but I can tell you when I was suffering from generalized anxiety and agoraphobia, like I had more than 300 negative thoughts a day. But the general person, the average person rather, they have on a day-by-day -day basis, one 24-hour period, they have around 300 nits go into their mind. Think about that, folks. 300 times. Imagine if you asked 300 women out over the weekend then. 150 on Saturday, 150 on Sunday. And all of them say, go fuck yourself. <laughs> that would be a, a, a kick in the joint, wouldn't it? That would not feel good for your ego and your pride. Now, combine that and put that in the forefront of your mind and challenge yourself with this. Every single time, starting tomorrow when you wake up, every single time you have a negative thought into your mind, as small as it could possibly be, like, oh, did I just do something wrong? Or did I forget to do something? That's negative. That's a negative thought. You're, you're questioning whether you did something that you know you should have done or prevented something. Or if you look at yourself in a mirror and say, oh, fuck. Yeah. I don't know why I colored my hair this way. I don't know why I'm wearing this, sh this shirt. This, these shoes don't look right with these fucking pants. You know, why did I listen to my wife and wear this belt with these you know, shorts? This don't look right. That happened to me today. <laughs> all these things, all these things are negative thoughts. So if you're taking up time and you're acknowledging that thought and giving it, you know, your attention... How many times are you doing it a day, inside of one day? Now, imagine doing this while you're in a trade. Oh, shit. That's heavy, ain't it? From the time you enter that trade, how many times are you thinking, this fucker is going to go against me? It's whales. If you're, if you're in there for a length of time, you're thinking a lot. This is going to turn on me. This is going to fail. Oh, I better not take the partial error. Oh, did I, I should have got in here. I should have done this. I should have done that. That's all negative thinking. 
So if you don't master yourself, this business is going to warp you. And you can have a profitable model because you all have it now. You can have something that has stats. You have it now. You have proof. People making real money all around the world. Climbing to the top of FTM. You don't see anybody else doing that in Texas. <laughs> Twist the knife, ICT. Twist it ever so slowly. You have no excuse that this stuff works. You have all the evidence now that it works. But you're trying to do things that's going to do what? Invite more negative thinking, toxic thinking. Oh, but ICT won't do a live stream. Fucking fraud. Look at him. <laughs> you don't need me to do that. You want me to do that. You want me to do that so you can copycat my trades. That's all this is, folks. Let's call it what it is. That's exactly what it is. You don't need that. And again, some of you at the beginning started getting all pissed off at me because I said I'm trying to wind down. Oh, come on, man. Folks, I have a life. I want to get back to it. And if I do live sessions, number one, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to tell you exactly the number one fucking reason why I'm not doing it, okay? I know that there's a bunch of asshats that are sitting around waiting for me to do a live stream. And once that happens, fucking people are going to knock it through my fucking door if they're knocking at all. Okay? And swat it because you bunch of fucking douchebags out there want to pull some shenanigans like that. I ain't doing it. I'm not going to give you that opportunity. Off. I'm not doing it. You can think I'm a fraud all the fuck you want. I'll still trade circles around you. And this excuse about I'm going to fake Robins with multiple accounts of my family members. The motherfucker already said one account. My full number. Full account number. You show yours, I show mine. The account balance, we're in there. No multiple accounts needed. No excuses. Okay? So stop all that shit. But I'm not doing no live session trading bullshit. Okay? That's not happening. Because honestly, once I did those, uh, I think I did two live streams. I got a text from a guy that said, hey, look, you know, this is this is what they're planning to do with you. I'm like, what the hell? They call it swatting, swatting or something to that effect where, you know, people, they, they report you're doing something and the SWAT and police or whatever come busting to your fucking door. You know, <laughs> listen, I already got some fucking nut job that's lied and said all kinds of bunch of bullshit. I'm not laying that out there so you can do that and so you can get off. No. Bring your ass to Robin so I can thrash you publicly. And at the end, we can shake hands and I'll come down and have a hot dog with you. So bottom line is this. You can do anything you want to do in this industry. The sky's the limit. But you yourself can hold yourself back doing all the wrong things. Every possible thing that something could have been done negatively as a trader, I've done all that. I've done all that shit. Now, what you watch me do today, that's right out of the book of ICT. That's, that's right out of the book. Everything I've taught you is exactly in that today. Buy side on a bearish day. Expect it to rally up. Take out the buy side. Shift in market structure. Fair value gap. Well, if you have two fair value gaps, what are you looking for? Well, you enter on the lower one, but you anticipate it likely trading up into the higher one. I watched and waited for it to trade up into that higher one. Once it did that, then I entered. Then when it broke down, it didn't take out that low yet for my first partial. So what, what can I do? It gives me a fair value gap to sell short and pyramid. Do I add more than my initial position? No. I go on with half. I keep splitting it smaller each time. If it would have gave me another fair value gap before the low was taken out, I would have pyramided again and shorted two more contracts. I was taking partials below old lows where sell side is. Retail has their sell stops below that. So when the market trades down there, there's going to be a flood of liquidity coming in the marketplace for willing sellers at lower prices. Perfect for me to buy it from because I'm short. And every time it makes a new low, I'm running down equity. Exactly what I taught. 
So I took another three off below that freshly made low. And then when it got real close to the, the lows and started going backwards, I typed it out. I said, trust me, patience, this is going to go lower. It's typical for them to give that false sense it's going to rally up. They'll tell you in books, in seminars, in boot camps, workshops, oh, this is support, or these are weak bears. So there's going to be a little bit of short covering rally there. Fuck it is. What that is, is enticement to let you think that that's support. It's going to rally. That's why I tell you right when it's happening, patience, this is going to drop. In fact, if it went up a little bit more, I would have sold more. Just to you know, put that little exclamation point on the little cherry on top, as only ICT does. Right out the book, ICT. Right out of the rules, folks. I'm selling right on the highs on a one-minute chart using the very logic I taught you. I don't care who thinks I'm a fraud. I don't care, what, okay, because you have seen it. You're trading with it. You've experienced it. I want to see someone else do the same thing I'm doing. If it's cherry-picked, how the fuck can I do anything else on another chart with one minute? Annotating it. Like, how, how can anyone, anyone in that short span of time manage another chart, another market? Come on, man. Seriously? That's why I do it. Just like that. Can you have two thoughts at the same time? And manage two thoughts at the same time with that level of detail? That's why I'm saying do it. If you think that, if you're listening, because you're not really in support of what it is that I do. You just want to hang out because you're waiting for me to say something so you can go make a a trolling thing, which is at this point pathetic. But try to do what I'm doing. And you as my student, you try it. Just to, just to appreciate how good it is that what you've learned works so well. Because if it could be faked, you'd be seeing everybody else out there faking it. They're not. They can't do it. They'd be selling courses and proving, look at this. I can do it too. But everything I use today is what I've already taught you. That should be encouraging. That should be a reminder. Hey, you know what? I don't need to do a lot. And while, yes, this stuff worked today, and he can do it, mean me, you're not ready to do that in a day like today. Because if you don't really understand what you're doing, you can really hurt yourself. And I don't want to see any of you remove yourself from this opportunity before you're giving yourself a real honest chance. So I could really go down a whole lot more rabbit trails. <laughs> but I'm quite certain my wife's going to be upset if I stay out here longer because I've already said I was spending less time than I've actually been talking to you. It's now been what? An hour and 15 minutes. So, yeah, I'm about an hour longer than I wanted to. But every time I tell you when it's going to be short, you know that's the rules. If it's going to be a short video or a short presentation, <laughs> bring road snacks. It's going to be longer than in the expected duration. But, folks, seriously, I really want to see you succeed. Okay. I know I joke and kid around and I, I spar with these trolls and such, but in all sincerity, I believe that if you submit yourself to the things I'm putting you through, it's good medicine. It will turn you into what it is that is required to do this successfully. I mean that wholeheartedly. I have done more than anybody else out there proving something conceptually with precision that really does exist. It's not contrived. I'm not looking at hindsight book examples where it looks like because I drew it out on a chart, I'm pushing a button. A broker is taking my order, channeling it into the marketplace. A counterparty is taking the other side of my trades. Hello? I'm showing you my executions. Are you seeing any other trades? 
No. At some point, you have to say, okay, everything else is bullshit. And that's painful because that means you're going to have a division of friends. Your online comrades. Oh, he drank the Kool-Aid. She drank the Kool-Aid. He's one of those cult members of ICT. That's okay. That's all right. We're in the cult of winning. I've embraced it now. I'm a cult leader now. I am a cult leader. Take that as a sound bite. I run a cult. We all pay homage to winning. Okay? Winning. That's why the fuck you started doing this. You joined this to what? To look cool in front of other people on social media? Fuck that shit. You want to be able to pay for shit that you can't afford for right now. You want to be able to pay your bills. You want to make sure your kids have more than they have right now. You want to be able to tell yourself, hey, you know what? You deserve a decent meal. Let's go out and have one. We don't need to go into the refrigerator and make leftovers again. Let's go out and have a night with the spouse, significant other, and just live up for a night. And just cut back and not worry about what the fuck that check is going to say. It is required to pay for it. I'm not worrying about my car payments. I'm not worrying about my mortgage being paid. I'm not worrying about how much it's going to cost for child's education. Because at this point, some of you should be thinking, hey, you know what? I was stressing about putting my kids through college and how expensive it is. Fuck college. Fuck that shit. Okay? This is college. This is really real shit. Okay? You're seeing proof of it. You don't see proof that you're going to courses, paying all that fucking money, stressing about tests. They ain't going to do a fucking thing for you when you get out there and try to do that job. When you finally get yourself in those positions, you're going to think about, what the fuck does this got to do with all those stupid ass exams and those fucking laboratory experiments that I had to do for college? I'm not doing anything for this shit. And I'm worried about working for this fucking asshole that's trying to tell me I can't have off next fucking week because Carl... Carl's been here one fucking week longer than me, and I can't have this fucking week off. That's the shit you want to do? That. That's the shit that you do for your life. What? No. Carve out your own path. You have the skill sets now. You have that. You just don't have the experience yet. And stop listening to these fucking people telling you that you're wasting your fucking time. Look around. People are doing it. Be encouraged. I'm not sock up. I'm not sock puppeting people in fucking FTMO. These people are coming to me, showing you the fucking receipts. I got people showing you with live accounts, with fucking withdrawals, bank fucking statements. But you didn't do a live stream. Hmm. Folks, it's right in front of you. All you have to do. Just grab, grab the fucking hold of it and just say, that's it. This shit is mine. I'm not letting go of it. I will do this. I don't give a fuck. Please, I'm not. I don't give a shit. You just watch me. You watch where I'm going with this information. That's how you should need to be thinking about it. Don't let these motherfuckers steal it from you. Don't let your family steal it from you. Don't let your co-workers steal it from you. Your fucking bo- is part-time right now. You're firing his fucking ass. Or her, instead of the ladies. Because ladies can be a boss, too. My wife. My wife is one of them. <laughs> and she's about to whip my ass when I get back in this house. I'm sure. Hey. She's the queen. Do you feel better? Do you feel better than you did before we got on this? Do you feel energized? Or do you feel beaten down and discouraged? Because I had everybody around me, everybody around me said, you're never going to be able to do this. It's a pipe dream. You're never going to be able to do it. You're going to be working just like the rest of us. Well, the only thing true about that statement is the rest of us in that group of family members and friends, they've been working for the last 50 fucking years plus. I'm not. I'm doing whatever the fuck I want to do. 
whenever the fuck I want to do it. And I don't look at price tags. And if that bothers you and that sounds arrogant, I don't give a fuck. I don't care. I'm not doing it to be arrogant. I'm telling you, this is what you're here to do. Learn how to make fucking money. And I'm teaching you for free. Some of you think that you should be telling me how to teach you. You don't know shit. You don't know anything. You have expectations. That's not understanding. That's expectations. That's you telling me what you want. Give it to me this way on this schedule. I don't like that you did this. I don't like that you did that. I don't like that you gave out the core content, Michael. I've lost respect for you. Guess what? It's my content. It's not your content. And it's not mentorship. It's the language. Look at the impact. Here's, here's what you need to do. Take a look. Go on Amazon. Do a search on SMC Smart Money Concept Trading. I did this the other day. And my wife is going to have to deal with this. The idea of going on Amazon, okay, because one joker um, put out my uh, concepts and reworded everything and falsely attributed to other people that I named that were influential people to me coming up. Like they had something to do with what it is I'm trading. None of the shit that I teach and trade with is found in anybody. I'm, I honestly today was so tempted to tweet Larry Williams on Twitter. Well, I don't even know if this is really a, if it's a real account or not. But I wanted to ask, hey, have you ever seen anybody trade like this? I have never personally confronted him and asked him, hey, what do you think about this? Everybody has beat him up. Hey, ICT, this guy, Michael Huddleston, the fucking frauder, the scammer, said that you are his mentor. Did you teach ICT? I bought this man's fucking books, okay? I bought this man's books. I bought this fucking man's courses, okay? That's mentoring me, okay? He was the first real mentor I had in trading. And 99% of everything he ever taught through his reference material, I don't even do anything with it. But I still say that man, I, I, I wish I had an opportunity to meet him. I'd love to meet him. I would love to shake his hand because he turned things around for me. Took me off on a, on a rabbit trail that I lost my train of thought because this is not where I was wanting to go. But, and that's, a, that's unsettling because now that's going to drive me. I'm not going to sleep tonight. I'll be up for 36 hours now over this. <laughs> but anyway. I don't know. Maybe I should do live streams. <laughs> Sit there and wait for them to come knocking on the door and live stream that happening. And wouldn't that be cool? So here, here's the here's the camera right on my front door and just wait for it to happen. <laughs> I've been expecting you. Yeah. <laughs> Some of you are like, what the hell is he talking about? Anyway. I think that... Uh, If you were honest in everything that's been shown to you free of charge with all the evidence you could ever expect to see, live accounts, real executions, recording from a blank chart, marking it up and delivering exactly, exactly like your own chart shows. Getting in at the highs when shorting and getting in at the lows when going long. Folks, that's the stuff that I believed with no evidence of having really known that it existed. I just believed it like a fairy tale. I thought that that's what every trader, every trader that made money did. Now, obviously, there's a lot of people out there that do all kinds of stuff. And they make money. If they're profitable. But they're not doing anything that we're doing. It's just, they're just catching movements between one price to another. And they attribute whatever the hell they want to attribute to as the reasons why. Those things are not what caused the market to move. But their religion, and that's exactly what this is, call it Elliot, call it Wyckoff, call it supply and demand, whatever, Gann. All those things are religions because you're attributing spirituality to something that had absolutely no effect on what, what caused that market fluctuation. I'm telling you, and I know this, is, this is the thing that makes me so divisive, and it's okay. I'll wear that badge. I'll wear that hat with honor, okay? I, if I'm ever remembered as anything, okay, I'm the guy that divided everybody with this shit, 
Okay, that's good. Let me go home into history with that, and I'm okay with it. But everything before me is religious trading. You might look at me as a cult leader. You might look at everybody in this community as a cult member. But there ain't a GAN trader. There ain't a supply and demand trader. There is no Elliott Wave trader that is consistent, more precise than me, period. And that's my real fucking ego. And guess what? I hope it makes you choke because I'm out here every day inviting you, inviting you, begging you, pleading with you. Please bring your candy fucking ass with your shit. Let's go. Because at the end of this fucking year, I'm done. I'm done. And you can pretend after I've left like you were going to do something. You were going to prove to the fucking world that your shit, whatever it is, and I'm not talking about any one particular person. This is an open invitation. Come. There's nothing like this, folks. There's nothing like this. And I am so fucking ecstatic that I have been given this so I can lay it in front of you just like this. Just like this. I could have put any price tag on this, any price tag, and demonstrated it just like you've been watching this entire year. Knowing that I am not selling you a mentorship, knowing that I'm not even going to sell you a fucking book, I'm not going to sell you shit. But think about it. How much? Would you be willing to pay based on what you saw right now to this year, this this year? If you saw all this shit going on, proof after proof, this and it delivering perfectly, how much would you dig into your ass to pay for this skill set? I guarantee fucking tea, you'd be willing to thousand dollars. And I'm not asking for anything. I just want you to succeed. I just want you to put the work in that's going to require a daily devotion to this. On weekends, too. But be diligent about it. And there's going to be every excuse in the book and book. Every possible distraction is going to be, uh, you know, I, I, I got I to gotta do this. This, this. this is the reason why I'm failing. I got this in the back of my mind. I can't do this because this is bothering me. You got to sort that shit out. 1440, you got to, you're agile and you got to make it work. There's no easy fixes for that. Your family life is a fucking mess right now and you can't find time to trade. You fix it. That's how you do it. Okay. That means if you have to get a different job, that's mean, that's it. You know, children are children. I don't want to see you doing what I did because it, it, it cost. It scarred me. It scarred my children, my family. They didn't get a dad. They had a ghost that they saw once in a while that I was chained to these charts, chained to these markets. Yeah, they don't want for anything, but they wanted me, and I was not there. I was checked out. And I'm telling you, it's easy to say, well, I'll live like that. For a year or two until I get it. What if it happens to be a little bit longer for you? One year turns into five real quick and you don't realize it. You ever play video games? How many times have you played video games and realized I've been playing for five fucking hours? I don't I don't realize I've been playing for five hours. I ain't taking a piss. I ain't had anything to eat. And I'm not I can't even feel my ass. <laughs> Yeah. That's how fast you can get tied up into this stuff and lose all train of thought. And that's why it's like in casinos. They don't put the clocks on the walls. They don't want you to realize how much time you've been there wasting putting money in these slot machines. And that's what retail traders do. You need to have a balanced approach to this. No more than two hours. Honestly, about an hour a day is, is optimal. Studying. On the weekends, two. Two hours. If you do more than that, you're binge watching and you're you're taking time from something else. Too much is is not 
the best way of doing it. Yeah, I know it feels like, okay, um, uploading sometimes three videos a day. It's going to be a schedule. It's not the schedule for you to digest information. It's, I have a deadline. I want to be done mid-November because I don't want to be doing shit in the holidays. You'll be seeing me tweet happy holidays. That's it. Like I'm, I'm, I'm trying to kick back and enjoy it. So you have to have a balanced approach to doing this and not let any other outcomes mess you up. Don't let it discourage you. Don't let it distract you. Don't let it give you perfect little excuses to be doing something other than the things that you're supposed to be doing. And don't look at anybody else's progress or results, whether they be good or bad, have any impact on you. Should you be encouraged? Yeah, sure, sure. If they're doing well, you know, support the community members. That's good. That's good. But don't look at someone's results if it's positive and say, man, what am I doing that, that my results aren't like that? Fuck that. That's, that's ass backwards. Don't do that. Because what you're trying to do is keep up with the Joneses. And you can't do that in trading because there's always going to be somebody that's going to be making more than you, bought more, sold more, held longer, got in earlier. Like that's the stupid shit that goes on in traders mindsets and you know that's why chat rooms are fucking stupid i see these guys stop fucking tweeting to me saying we gotta get an ict discord let's get it as soon as you do that i block you have you noticed that to the guys that had to restart and get a new account just so they can follow me again anybody that says hey let's start a telegram you're blocked well you're being a dick ict no i just i'm letting you know I don't subscribe to that idea. And chat rooms are a fucking toxic wasteland. Basically, what you're saying is, is, hey, we all don't know what the fuck we're doing. Let's all get together and share ideas. The fuck is that? You have no idea what you're doing. You don't know what you're doing. And you're literally going to be asking the next person that's in here looking for the same fucking thing. Hey, somebody in here is going to know what they're doing. I'm not in these fucking rooms. I'm not going into chat rooms, okay? I'm not going into discords. I'm not going into fucking telegram rooms. I'm not doing any of that Mickey Mouse shit. That's a distraction. See, you all, you all want a team. You want a fucking team. I am me. Just like I'm trying to create in you. You are your own fucking army. You're an army of one. You don't need me to be your fucking general. You don't need me to be your team fucking captain that tells you what you need to be doing today. You don't need that shit. And all of these young guys and gals that are out there, they're trying to get these little... I don't know what the fuck they're trying to start. These little circles of, of people that come together. I'm telling you, we did it on baby pips. We took over their fucking chat room and broke it. Hey, I'm going in the chat room in 10 minutes. We get there, it's gone. Chat room won't work. We flooded it. Too many people one time trying to chat. You can't. You can't even keep up with the conversations. It's a waste. Did it feel good for my ego to see that happen? Yeah, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> it was awesome, but useless. It was. It was not. It was not constructive. And you're going to get in these rooms, and you're going to quickly find out that you're not getting anything. Listen, you don't need to go to rooms. To get my shit on the slide. I'm putting it on YouTube. So we don't need to have a Discord. We don't have a Telegram. We don't need anything else. I'm talking to people directly. Right on, on Twitter. So on my videos. The core content videos. And any future video. I'm not opening the comment section. You got some shit to say to me. You come right to fucking Twitter. Everybody sees it. And I can't block you. I can block you if you say some dumb shit. And I ain't got an interest in, in having any further conversation with you. But everybody else can see that what you're saying to me. So I'm right here in the middle of the open public. We're, we're in general population right now. Bring your shit. You got something good to say? Bring it. You got something bad to say? Bring it. I'm not hiding. I'm right here in front of everybody. But having this idea of going into these little communities, we have a fucking community. We have a community, and when there's a tweet that's put out, you put your idea or suggestion or complaint or whatever fuck you have to say about that particular tweet. It's easy. Everything's sorted. What's he talking about? Well, look at everybody's responses underneath that tweet. 
if I see somebody answer what someone's asked about, I'll like it if it's what I, if I'm in agreement with what they're saying. If I like their response to you, if you have a question about what I was saying, that's like me saying the very words that they just said. I don't need to be saying everything. If someone says because they've been around me and they know how I've taught, and someone doesn't understand what I said in a tweet, someone will come behind and say, this is what he meant by that. Oh, and then if I see that, I like that. That little heart is my cosign saying, yeah, that's what, I don't need to say that again. I'm saying that that person's saying. So we don't need chat rooms. We don't need a fucking telegram. I can't manage all of you as it is. There's too many of you. And you want me to go into another fucking social media medium? No way. I'm, I'm, I, I'm too, it's too much shit going on. YouTube and Twitter is too much. Too fucking much. I got to wind this down and I got to return back to my private group. I'm going to hang out with them. Now, that sounds like, you know, you're being an asshole now, ICT. No, I have obligations. But I told them, once I get court content up, I'll return back to them and I hang out with them. And I want to just have that little bit of time with them. And then most of my time is in my personal life. And I think I fucking deserve it. Okay. That, that's the bottom line. I deserve it. I put enough into this shit now. Going for shit. 12 years? Non-stop. You think because I walked away from YouTube and Twitter that I slowed down. Man, I, it's been like a relentless pace. And I'm doing this so these assholes that have told you know, sold my shit with no fucking respect, just no fucking couth, just pieces of shit, I've made it impossible for them to ever want to sell it now. And if you bought it, you're stupid. Because that shit isn't going to be helpful to you. You had to be there with me doing it. But to save these people from being victimized from these scammers and trying to sell this shit or get them into their own little telegram room, come and join my signal service and I'll give you ICT mentorship videos. Fuck that. Watch the videos. Use the core content if you want to. You don't need it. The model I literally put together on YouTube that's straight right to the point. There's 41 videos. That literally is all you need. I took everything and condensed it into one individual model that will never stop working. I am not changing anything with the fucking algorithm. It's not going to change. It's not going to stop working. When we have no longer any access to the marketplace, that's when it stops working. Is that plain enough for you? Is that straight to the point? No bullshit. Yes. You have a model that works. It's very few rules to it. You have a specific time of day to look for the setups. That's trading. That is trading, having rules, a process, and following it, and accepting the fact that some to do it wrong and lose money. Guess what? That's what everybody endures. You have to go through that, and don't be afraid of it. Don't be afraid of that experience of, I thought I did everything right, but I lost. See, you're, you're trying to find the video where I cover how to avoid that when the video I put out was handling drawdown and an inevitable loss or losing streaks, something to that effect. So I'm telling you, you're going to lose money. You're going to absolutely lose money. You're going to have losing trades. You're going to have everything in the chart indicate to you that it is likely to do a specific thing and you're going to find the courage to push the button. And when it happens, it fails. It fails. What's the it? You. You did it. Your decision was wrong. The concepts didn't fail. The market didn't do you wrong. You made a decision that was inaccurate. And you have to own that. And there is liberation. When a trader comes to that mindset and says, you know what? I didn't do that right. 
But guess what? It doesn't change anything. It just means that I had to pay for that mistake. And that mistake gives me experience. I make money in the next trade or the trades after this, and I come back from that drawdown. It will be an encouragement that all this was was a skin knee. I got a boo-boo. I got a paper cut. It didn't remove my head cleanly and lose my account or make it impossible for me to trade again. You didn't remove your arsenal. It hones you. It makes you trust the fact that you can come this when you have a losing trade of losing trades. Some of you are not even in a position where you've even endured that yet. But you want to go out there and rush to get an FTML account. Like that's going to somehow magically prevent you from having drawdown. You know, if you are able to get a funded account from one of these companies and you send the proof that you, I want to encourage you and I'll retweet it because I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. And a lot of people say, oh, that doesn't mean shit. Anybody can do that. Well, I don't see a lot of people doing it. I mean, look at how many students I have. Do you see 300,000 of them tweeting to me? No. I'm aware of that. I'm cognizant of the fact that, you know, it takes some effort, and not everybody is able to do it. To do it, I got a lot of respect for that. They did something that got them to that point. It may not be all the right things, but I want to be an encouragement to them. So I am aware, yes, that they may not even they may never even be profitable with the trading account once they get access to the quote unquote funded account. They may blow it then. That's okay. You're probably going to. But that experience is needed. But then you'll have a greater understanding and respect for what it is you're doing. Because it it feels like, well, you know, I only paid a couple hundred dollars to get this funded account. And I'm just going to try to do YOLO trading. Do some wild stuff. And, you know, if I make money, great. If I don't, then I'll just, you know, start again, respawn like it's a video game. And if you're doing it like that, you're doing it wrong. You got to treat it like it's your only money. If you don't do it right, you're homeless. That's the mindset you should have. Treat it like that. Not be afraid that every mistake will lead you to homelessness, but you need to make sure that you're doing everything you can diligently, responsibly, and not thinking, well, you know, I could just respond because that's what this industry has created, this idea that, well, you know what, I can go for this funded account and I can get another funded account and join them together and branch this one together and I could have accounts and have a million dollars in, in funded account. And if I blow one, I got 16 more over here. That's the wrong mentality. That's the wrong mentality. And honestly, you should only do it long enough to get your own money and then get the fuck out of that shit. Because I don't think it's going to be around long. That's my personal opinion. I might be wrong, but I know <laughs> I'm going to be putting the hurting on those son of fuckers because what I've taught, it works. And people are coming in with proof that this shit works. And I've already heard one company talk about how they're going to lessen the amount of people coming in next year. I'm not putting names on it, but I'm sure if you do some research, you'll find out who I'm talking about. Why would you think that's occurring? Because they see a wave of motherfuckers coming in that can whip their ass. See, they like to make money on the failures. That's a business for them. A lot of people coming in not knowing how to do it. And they have to re-up it and go in. And, and hey, that's a pretty shrewd business model. I mean, if all the stats are you know, to be believed, it's you know, 90 days or less, you're going to blow your account. Isn't it interesting that companies like that... Uh, the company name escapes me. It begins with A. It's not AMP. Um, Apex. The uh, You can only take out 3000 for the first month, 3000 the second month, and I don't know what the third month is. They keep you throttled because they want to make sure that you are held inside those 90 days because the bell curve of statistical evidence suggests that if they hold you underneath that 90 days, you're going to blow your ass out and they won't have to pay you shit. 
It's a casino, folks. All of this shit is rigged. So now think about that. Not only do you have to beat the casino, the house, the market, you have to beat yourself because you're going to be throwing wrenches into this whole process with your toxic thinking, ass backwards mentality, trying to prove yourself to the world, your spouse and your friends and neighbors, like that fucking means anything. And now you're going to go through a funded account process. And trust me, folks, I'm not trying to discourage you, but I'm just, I'm talking really real with you. If you were my fucking best friend and you came to me and said, look, ICT, no, look, Michael, we've been friends for a long time. We went to school together. I've watched what you've been doing. Okay. I, I, put, I pissed around and I'm finally at the point where I want to do what you do. How do I go about doing it? I would talk to you just like this. I talk just like this when it's things like this. I'm passionate. I'm not going to pull any punches. I don't care if you like the way I said it. I don't care if you agree because I live this shit. But if you think for a moment that you're just going to waltz in here and do these funded account challenges and something different is going to take place, like, like that somehow is the landscape for you. You're underneath another umbrella of probabilities of failure. And you need to be aware of that. Now, that's not meant to discourage you, not to make you feel like, oh, shit, you know, he just took the wind out of my sails. No, what I'm reminding you of is the rules I gave you, use them. Don't try to make a lot of money. If they say you can only make $3,000, okay, how about just try to go and make um, you know, 1500 bucks? Stay way under the radar. Don't be in a rush to get the money out. And then the second month, do the same thing. Oh, we can only get three thousand. Well, let me make sure I get my three fucking thousand dollars. No, beat the whole process by not pushing. That's how you. Do. I think it's ten thousand dollars. If I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong in, in the in the. Twitter, but I think if I'm not mistaken, the third month is they can only let you take or they only let you take $10,000. So what that means is at best scenario, you could in three months take out, what's that, $16,000? What happens if you run it up bigger? You can't touch it? Apparently that's what it is. I, that's my understanding. And I don't have any experience doing it, but why push harder than you need to? Just Make a thousand to fifteen hundred bucks, and then once you make it, stop. Let them know you're there to fucking get paid, and you're not in a hurry to get the money. That's how you beat the process. That's how you beat the game. That's how you beat them. Don't think I got to push it to the maximum. It'll blow out, and that's what all you young people are out here doing. You're pushing it because the threshold they give you. That's the high end, so that's what you're going to aim for, right? Why? Why are you doing that? All you're doing is in, it's increasing the likelihood that you're going to blow the account. You're going to do something to blow it out. So that's my word on funded accounts. You guys ask me all the time, you know, what's my thought process on it? That's exactly my thought process on it. Don't try to do the maximum that they allow. That's, that's how you're going to fail. That's what every person does when they go to casino. Think about it. They don't go in there thinking... Well, let me make sure I manage my money well. They're going in there getting fucking lit. Maybe on drugs. But they're drunk. They're drinking constantly while they're there. Do you think sound, rational thinking and rent is in the forefront of their drunken stupor? No. But when you get these funded accounts, you're drunk. See, I'm not trying to diminish your achievement once you get to that point because it takes effort to get there. You, you still have to do something to get there. Now, they might not be the right things that got you there, admittedly. Once you get there, yeah, that's commendable. And I like to encourage that. But once you're there, don't fall victim to the idea that, you know, you might just get lucky. The stars are aligned and that spin of the casino one-armed bandit sends you those three sevens and you get a jackpot. 
because we're back to that same square one earlier in the conversation. You just want to have that positive experience and you're willing to risk everything that you paid and put into it to have that one feel good moment. Because if you can have that one feel good moment, then it's real. It's not a dream. It's not an imagination on your part. It's something that you really did and you really took money out and you really spent it and you really achieved something. You really rose to the occasion and you made all your fucking friends and your family look like assholes because you could throw it in their fucking face and say, you piece of shit. You tried to hold me back. You talked down to me. You said I was never going to do it. Fuck you. And shove it up your ass. That's what you're thinking. That's what you're thinking. That's exactly. And you're nodding your fucking head right now. The ones that know that's what you're thinking. You know that's what you want to do. You want to be able to stick it to them and say. But it's creating such an emotional and psychological attachment to what you're trying to do. It's going to be the very reason why you fail. Because you're putting an all or nothing idea behind it. It's the be all end all. It's the only way it can happen. It has to happen this way and only this way. Because you can't imagine it doing it any other way. Because you don't have the experience of seeing what you've learned. That is consistently delivered. You just want it to happen that one good time. That one good stretch of four weeks or so. So you can get that first withdrawal. Then it's real. Because it could be a scam until that happens, right? This game is difficult, folks. It's all happening between your ears. In your mind, you think that chart's going to run against you. Well, it's probably not. Or you think it's going to run in your favor. Well, it's probably not. You think it's not going to go anywhere today. It's going to be a consolidation day, and then it tears off. Big range day. All these things create what if. Not what if. What if doesn't make you money. What you do makes or loses money. What's already happened, you can't make money on that. And you can't lose money on that. So don't let that shit make you have a decision that puts you into risk. Because if you're chasing market moves and you go into these funded account challenges or get to the point where you have the funded account access, do not go into that impulsive mindset. It'll be boring. Low threshold. Aim for $1,000 for the first month. You think that's some figure I just pulled out of my ass for that end series, you use that. Like I said, use it for your model. When you get funded, go just try to get that $1,000. Oh, but did they, they'll let me get 3000 Who gives a fuck? Who gives a shit? The market laid $25,000 in front of me and said, hey, you want more? I could have done more trades. Who said I could have done more trades? Me. Self-discipline. Not, there's not enough of that talked and taught because there's not enough profitable fucking people in the world that's trying to teach. That's why. You have to have discipline. You have to have rules that say engaging. And guess what else you have to have? Rules where it tells you you're disengaging. You're not going to do something anymore. And that's not weakness, backpedaling. That's not retreating. That is we beat your ass. We're going home to celebrate and we're going to come back again tomorrow and take some more. That's war. It's not retreat. You're just taking the troops home. Some rest. Food. Get your mind in the right place again out there and battle it again. You're dictating the pace of the, this war. But some of you are defeating yourself before you even get out there. And you think that these funded accounts are going to be your secret fucking weapon. Like that's going to be 
that's the silver bullet. That's the thing, man. That is the thing. That's This is the thing that got me over that hump. And you lose track of everything that you've been trained to do. And you do something stupid. And you lose all self-control. You make a mistake. And you want to try to fix it real quick. <gasps> oh, I, I keep going like this. Take the loss. Stop. And come back the next day. They have thresholds on there you have to meet. And some of them are pretty difficult for a new trader. So if you lessen what is your tra and try to just aim for $250 a week, make that $1,000 and then stop. Get beyond that first three months. And then all those limitations, my understanding, and I may, I may be incorrect. I don't have a whole lot of insight about them but what little knowledge i know i do know i have is that they don't let you have the access to what you could potentially earn so don't push too hard don't make it an olympic feat olympic challenge is not an olympic event for you to try to get to three thousand dollars the first month the three thousand dollars the second month and the ten thousand dollars on the third month and then wait to be able to take it all out What prevents you from just aiming for the $1,000 and just taking that out and being thankful to, hey, $1,000? And I had to work hard for that. How hard do you have to work to get that $1,000 right now without trading? What do you have to sell? Your ass, something in your house, all your possessions. You got to get a second or third job to make that $1,000 extra a month. Contrast that with doing such a small task, $250 a week, and don't let anybody tell you, oh, it's not even worth doing. Oh, it's worth doing. You're trying to tell me, if you walked out your house and you found an envelope on your front step every fucking morning with 50 bucks Monday through Friday, at the end of the week, you got 250 bucks and you come out there the next week, it's the same show. And it's went on for four weeks. And all of a sudden, that $1,000 that you now have, you're saying that if it didn't happen the next month, you wouldn't miss it? Bullshit. Bullshit. You got to make your results low-hanging. Easy to get. You're not stressing yourself out to get it. And it's so fucking easy to get. And when you get it, consistently over and over and over again, that gives you experience. It gives you experience with managing expectations, your personal responsibility as an individual trader, not to try to do more than that's necessary. And saying no when your impulsive side says, just go on one more time. Come on, come on. It was so easy. We got it so fast. Look at all the time we got. Just go on one more time. That's the enemy. That's the enemy. You won't feel like it's the enemy. It's going to feel like that's the you in trading that has developed. Now you know. You're dialed in. You got ICT. And then when you get in there, you lose what you made and more. And now that hurts. And you try to fix it right away. And you got to say, no. Loss, I'll come back tomorrow. That's how you do it. There's nothing wrong. going to go to work and then fell ill before you got there or maybe you got there and you had lead to come home you couldn't fulfill your obligations as an employee and unless you're paid salary you lost those hours of wage did you lose your job because of that no make less money that week yep did your whole household come unglued because of that no it's an event that transpired that had a negative impact on you monetarily and you had to endure it. It didn't change anything to the point where you're now homeless or you're, oh, I got to get a second job now because I had to go home that day. That's what you're doing when you take a trade and it was a losing trade and you refuse to take that loss and go home.
You're trying to, I need another job. I need, I need another job. I need to take another job and assume more risk because this one didn't pay me like I wanted it to. Now, how are you going to feel if the last job that you were at that just fired you and said you sucked as an employee, you didn't do your job right, and you go in and you started another company, you got a chip on your shoulder, and a new boss says, hey, look, you know, you know we don't do things like that. Like that. In your mind, the first thing that's going to come to mind is, who the fuck do you think you're talking to? Dude, I don't need to work this job. I can get another job. I got, I, you know, I found this job when I wasn't even looking for it. That kind of shit. That's the kind of stuff I said when I was a young man. I had lots of jobs. I'd walk out of jobs, quit, and fucking tell them to go kiss my ass. Because I, I didn't want that. But that chip on your shoulder is the same thing you will have if you have a losing trade. You now are going into another job. And you're going to create that job. You're going to find a job. The job is the next trade. But you're not prepared to go to work for another company because you're salty because you just got fired and your last trade fired you. You're no longer employed. You're not gained from the marketplace because that trade fired your ass. You got a chip on your shoulder. You need to tell somebody off. Well, they fired you. They ain't they giving you a time or stage to be heard. So what are you going to do? You're going to go and press the button again. Now you're employed again. But you have a chip on your shoulder. And you want to get back what that last job took away from you. Your pride. Your bruised ego. You need to prove something. You got to prove something to your spouse. I'm not worthless. I should have never got fired by that other company. That other trade should have never kicked me out. The broker did it to me. The market maker did it to me. The economic counter did it. You know, all these other excuses outwardly. That's not you when it's just you. See, all these things are factors that you don't think about because you don't have the experience. And if you don't have them in the forefront of your mind and you even try to do these funded account challenges, that ticking clock, that makes you want to do things that you don't need to do. Slow down. Don't try to aim so high and give yourself a real chance. And what happens if you aim for the thousand dollars and you only make 500 bucks? That's your money. Don't leave it in there. Take it out. If they give you the opportunity to take it out, take it out. That reward for your time and effort, that's going to mean a lot. And it, it'll be an encouragement for you to have it in your journal that I took a withdrawal, 500 bucks. Look at this. This is like I really did that. And I have a lot of students where $500 is a lot of money. And I apologize. Sometimes you hear me talk about money and it may feel like I'm talking down to you. I'm not talking down to you, folks. I'm just reminding you that you're learning something that doesn't have a limit to what you can do with it. But on the same side of that coin, you have to be able to manage yourself responsibly. Because on the other side of that coin, you have the likelihood of losing everything and more than you have. And that part is what makes me unpopular. Because I remind you every discussion, every time we get together, that this is the really real side of it all. There's risk here. And you're going to lose money, guaranteed you're going to lose money. But losing money is not losing your trading career. That's just a transaction or a series of transactions, just like losing hourly wages from being sick, car breaking down, flat tire. All that shit is an expense. But because you have made this Olympic event of trading, you've made no room. You've allocated absolutely no room for things that go wrong. Things are going to go wrong, folks. <laughs> it's going to happen. You're not going to do something right. In a losing transaction. And if you don't know what you're doing and you rush back in there and try to fix it right away with ill prepared experience and logic that's lacking, are you going to have blue ribbon results? No. You're probably going to have a compounded loss. And that feeds on the negative thinking that we talked about earlier. You're going to have more negative thinking and the negative thoughts that propel you into thinking what? I can't go home and let my spouse see me with this loss. 
they're going to see me as soon as I come around the corner. They're going to know right away I've lost money, and they're going to ask me, and I don't want to lie to them. I don't want to have to say I lost money because they're going to give me that look. I fucking knew you were going to lose I told you this was going to end up losing money. We can't afford to lose money. Now, contrast that with if you're going to have your spouse involved in this or aware of what you're doing. You sit down and say, these are the things I'm going to do. If I lose money on this first trade or a trade and it's this much, I stop trading for that day. Now, contrast that and you exercise that responsibility and you lose and trade. And you leave your trading area. You walk and join back to your family and your spouse sees you. And you say, I had a losing trade today. Oh, okay. What happened? Well, this is what my rule said, and I had limited it to this. And once I got to that point, I stopped. Now, doesn't that disarm any rethink? Okay, you're reckless. Exactly. It's exactly what it does. You have to be able to present yourself only to yourself in the mirror every day and say, okay, I'm not reckless. I'm not going out here and doing things on a, on a whim. I'm being responsible with my time. I'm being responsible with this money, and I'm sticking to the rules. And if I incur a loss, I'm following the rules that help me mitigate loss and risk. So that way I don't blow the account. That way I don't fill myself up with toxic thinking and I don't stress my spouse out because I'm telling you whether you like it or not, if your spouse knows that you're trading, you have now made this a team effort. And it never, it never is easy when it's like that. Never. Now, am I saying hide things from your spouse? I didn't say that. But the Bible does say don't let your left hand know what your right hand's doing. (laughs) <laughs> so you can take that how you want to interpret it. I just look at it this way. If I would have done that and said nothing about what I was doing, admittedly, I probably wouldn't have my oldest son, Cody, because the lady I got involved with would have never been in a, in a position to want to be with me for the reasons that she wanted to be with me. And I'll just say that. Okay. I wouldn't have got into trouble with my personal life with a particular woman had I kept my mouth shut and not let my friends know everything I made and what I was doing. Now, my present wife, obviously, uh, in the beginning, she didn't know everything. And it wasn't until, you know, years ago that she understood more about who I am, what I'm able to do, and even what we have. If I can go back in time and do things differently, I wouldn't have said anything. And now I'll let you judge me on that. I don't give a fuck. Okay? But I would have liked to never really been open or candid about any of it. And that's how I teach my kids. I tell them all the time. And she, my wife does not agree with this mindset. And I know I've said this many times in this conversation that we're going to close it. But I'm going to say this and I'm not actually going to close it. Because I know she's going to be disappointed when I go in the house. And you told me it was going to be this long and now you've been out here for two hours. But, uh. I tell my children that you don't owe anybody an explanation as to what you have or what you earn, period. Being married, okay, now I'm going to say this. This is really going to really cause division, but, again, this is my personal opinion, and I'm entitled to it. And you can be argumentative, and you can say, I don't agree with that. And that's fine. We can agree that we don't agree. That's fine. But... I'm telling my sons and my daughter that what they earn, what they have in their bank accounts is nobody's fucking business, especially in this world today where people are motivated. They will tell you and marry you and have children with you under the guise that they love you. They want to be with you when they're willing to put their body through conception, childbirth, marriage just to get in a situation where they can fleece you and then you're devastated financially, emotionally and now you have a broken household all because one individual is motivated by money when you might be motivated to be profitable as as an investor you're not motivated to live a life that would potentially wreck someone else's family or your own family 
So I tell all of my children, your money is nobody's fucking business, period. When you get married, should you decide to go that route, your spouse, it, you, it does not entitle them to know what you have. When you die, then they'll know. Leave it to them, and there it is, and surprise them with how much you got. But you don't tell anybody what you have, because then guess what? If they're with you, they want to be with you because they want to be with you. Not because you have the ability to pay for things that the average person can't. And I know that there's going to be people that hear this and say, this is, wow, this is, I wouldn't have expected that from my CT. I mean, I thought he was this and that. I'm telling you from personal experience. And look around, folks. This, this world is so fucked up and corrupt. Do you honestly believe? Look at these young guys, okay? This, <laughs> I'm looking at the clock. I've got three minutes to get this done. Look at these young guys out there with their cars on Instagram, YouTube, and such. And they're flashing everything. You know, I got this, I got that, look at me, I, I got this chain, I got these watches, and I got these cars, and I, I traded this car and got this car, and I got that car, and I'm, I'm wearing these types of shoes and these clothes. Look at me, look at all the attention on me. Be honest, folks. What type of individual are they attracting? Do you think anybody's looking at that and saying, you know what, this is a really upstanding young man. He's, he's well put together, well mannered. You know, he's, he's not a show off. You know, and he's probably someone that's going to be very trustworthy when I'm not around. He's not, in, he's not trying to be influential to other people to get more attention. And he's, he's not going to do anything that would draw more attention to himself. So I wouldn't have to worry about anything when I'm not around him. You think people are looking at these young guys like that? No. But there are girls out there thinking, Man, all it takes is one good weekend, and I got my ass a meal ticket. Because, folks, whether you like this shit or not, or believe it, that's exactly what happened to me. That's exactly what happened to me. And I didn't even see it coming. I got rolled. <laughs> ICT got fucking, okay? I said, what happened? And, and I don't give a shit who believes it, okay? But in 1995, ICT got rolled. And my whole life changed because of that. And I tell my kids and my oldest son, who was a result of that, I tell them all the time, you don't tell anybody what you have. And if you're married and your spouse is you know, like, hey, you know, can we afford it? You just tell them the bills are fine. You don't worry about that part. You don't pour it on thick. You don't say what you got and what you can earn. None of that shit. If you live your life like that, you'll have less drama. Don't don't call attention to things like that. Because you can afford Lamborghinis doesn't mean you should have a whole row of them out front of your house. What's, what's that advertising? Well, if I was a con artist, okay, let me tell you what I would do. <laughs> I would go down to Miami in Florida, and I would drive my car in front of one of these other cars, that these YouTuber guys, these Instagrammers, and I would brake check them, let them rear end me, and I'd sue them. That's what a con artist would do. There you go. That's a con artist. That's a con artist mentality. Okay. They're broadcasting. They have something to take. Think about it. I have two Corvettes. Yeah. That I rarely ever drive. And some of you ask that. Can you see? I know why you're asking because you think I flipped them. Because <laughs> the guy down in Texas says I flipped Corvettes and white ones are the most popular ones and yada, yada, yada. It's the same fucking Corvettes that I'm not trading in. They're my babies and I'm not getting rid of them. But I don't go around doing those types of things because it draws special attention. I have cars that wouldn't look like anybody else's in the neighborhood I'm, I'm sleeping in right now. But I could afford a whole lot more. I don't do any more. Because I've seen the tide change, the way the world is right now. Everybody's looking for a meal ticket. Everybody's looking for a lawsuit. Everyone's looking for some way to scam the next person. And you want to broadcast to the world, look at me. I have something to take. So I tell my children, don't do that. And I don't care what your opinion about that is. Because I guarantee you, nobody listening to me has as much money as I have. 
So you're not going to tell me any advice that I need to follow. So you young men and women that are aspiring to get wealthy and affluent with all this information you've been learning, think about that. Because what you're saying to yourself, you're only worth special attention and adoration if you do that. And you're doing it all wrong. You're doing it all wrong. Because you are putting a price tag on relationships with you based on what you can buy, obtain, floss, how you drip, <laughs> you know, all the things that you can, you know, run around and represent as an image. That one guy that I met, Adele. I met him in the parking lot of Kenwood High School. That's my own water high school. And I, I pulled up in my 21 Corvette. And I'm quite certain when I got out of the car, he looked at me and thought, hmm, that's not what I imagined. I didn't expect ICT to be this guy. And I tell this to you all. If you met me and you spent time with me, this is how I am. This is me. If I'm talking. Otherwise, most of the time I'm not talking. The markets or world events, I'm talkative. <laughs> it's hard to shut me up. Case in point, we're now over two hours. But I'm usually soft-spoken, not really talkative, and I keep to myself. But anything like the market... I, I, I have to I have to stop myself. I have to make a point to, to or something, you know, like my wife or my kids interrupting me saying, okay, look, this has got to, you know, take your attention away. But I'm not trying to live a very high attention lifestyle. Like, I, I don't do those types of things because I learned a lesson when I was 20. It put me in a situation where I had to change my life. For 21 years. So it scarred me. It caused me to not necessarily re, you know, really appreciate my life as much as I would have had I not made that decision, you know, to be with someone who I thought was single, who I thought was, you know, someone else. And it was being represented to me that that relationship was something that it wasn't. And then becoming a father to a child with that woman because of the things that I did and the things I said and the way I acted and the things I flaunted, it brought the attention that none – see, you want everybody to look up to you and say, wow, they're successful. Wow. Look how many people follow them. Everybody's got a high opinion of that person because of this, that, and the other thing. I made a name for myself with a demo account and proving things that repeat over and over again with boring videos, no glamour, no glitz, none of that stuff, just the stuff that works. It's never been about image. And when I talk to you, I try to return back to that idea because I know my kids are listening to these types of things because they're on the Internet. My older kids listen to these things, and I'm not proud of some of the things and how I talk because they know when I get wound up, I'll use the colorful words. But I'm capable of having a conversation without using them. But I'm passionate about some of the things, and when I get answered, then I go reaching for the blue-collar words. And that's the parts that I wish I wouldn't have had in these conversations. I wish I could my tongue. I wish I could control myself and, and be able to articulate these things without having to go for those words. But my subconscious says you'll appreciate the intensity of what I said if I speak to you in a language that we could all agree on is more impactful. And words are words. 
Okay, and, and, and the word buck. Some of you never heard me say that because in the YouTubes, I don't ever say those types of words. But and stuff, I'm going to say that because I'm going to reach to something that is, well, I have a, a strong conviction about. And I'm going to reach for something because I'm conveying in the, the easiest manner with the vocabulary words that I'm choosing to either show excitement, disdain, rage, or happiness, elation, you know, or laughing about it and just saying, this is fucking crazy or this is funny or whatever. That word may be viewed in some of you as the audience. Oh, it's too vulgar. I wish he wouldn't do that. That word is just a four-letter word. It means absolutely nothing. I didn't fornicate with anybody. I didn't call you a fucker. I'm reaching to a word so that way you understand I'm trying to put an exclamation behind it. And when I'm talking about things that are not leaning on that type of vocabulary, it doesn't diminish the things I'm talking about. It just means that at the moment, I feel like I should have your attention without needing to do that. But other times, I'll reach to those words where I really want you to pay attention, really pay attention to this and reflect on it. And, and are you making these decisions with these thought processes in mind? And if you are, I'm challenging you to think about why you're doing that. Because most of you aren't really here to make money for the money side, you know, the, the money side of it. You want to have attention. You want to feel heard. You want to feel appreciated by other people. And you think that that's self-worth. And that's not. That's fake. And I learned that the hard way. You know, my father, he's in uh, Jessup, Maryland. Inmate number 155634, Maryland House of Corrections, Michael Joe Howington, convicted of murder. He was a contract murderer. Hitman, the real thing, absolutely real deal. Google it, look him up, there it is. I have a lot of scars like you have you may have a father and a mother that you were raised by i didn't have that so i have a lot of built-in hostility i have reasons to prove myself everybody said i was going to be just like him you're gonna be just like your father fuck i am i have an anger issue sometimes well let's be honest just about every day but i think i do a pretty good job of managing i haven't murdered him i didn't go to drug usage like my father did when he was in Vietnam and he watched two thirds of his platoon turn on each other and literally shoot each other up. And he had to drag a dead body over top of him to hide. So that way they, he didn't get popped either. And that's the only stories I ever heard from him about Vietnam. Because when I would ask him, his eyes would gloss over and he would stop talking. And I just thought that, well, he didn't go through anything. And he's just embarrassed. And I've talked to other folks that were in Vietnam. And the guys that really went through stuff, they don't talk about it. But he picked up a heroin addiction over there. And came home. And his mother and father gave him everything. Now, they weren't affluent like I am. But they were better than most people in our area in that time, they gave him cars. They gave him an apartment that he didn't have to pay for. They paid his rent and his furniture and gave him spending money. And then he got drafted. So when he came out, came home, he had a heroin addiction. Now, he didn't want to do heroin over there. But because of the stress and everything that's around war, who do you trust? And he couldn't even trust his own platoon members. Imagine that. These are the guys that you have entrusted your life to. You got their back, you got theirs. And because of fear, not knowing when the hell you're going to get killed, you start using drugs.
just to numb it. And one day, they all fucking flip out, and two-thirds of his platoon started shooting each other. That fucks up anybody. So when he came home, he had to pay for a drug addiction that he picked up over there. And my grandparents cut him off. So what's he going to do to make money? Whatever he could. And he got in the business of doing things that he shouldn't have. And it's a strange twist of events. My best friend from preschool, his wife, her uncle, he and my father decided they were going to do a contract and take a guy out. Went into a bar. Let him out by gunpoint. Walked him behind Owen's school. Told him to put his knees on the ground. Put your hands on your head. And lights out. And my father's ex-wife was the one that turned him in for the ransom. So I didn't have a father like that. I had a guy I never remembered seeing until I was seven years old going to Maryland House of Corrections and the penitentiary downtown in Baltimore. I had a lot of lies told to me saying, hey, son, we're going to go fishing. We're going to do all those things that kids do with their dad. They were all lies. So I grew up as a young man with a lot of hostility and animosity and a chip on my shoulder. Shit to prove. Everybody in my family said I was going to be just like him. I look around, I don't see anything that my dad ever did. My father would not be talking to you like this. My father would not have poured out thousands of hours for nothing. My father wouldn't give two fucks about you. My father wouldn't care if you needed anything, if you were in lack, he wouldn't care. So I'm not nothing like my father. And my mother didn't want me. The only reason why I was here and talking to you is because that same man threatened to kill my own mother and cut her throat if she was going to have an abortion because she had just had an abortion before finding out she was pregnant with me. By another man. So I grew up with this idea that I wasn't supposed to be here. In a lot of ways, most of my childhood was me building this idea in my head that I got to come something that's going to make them regret how they neglected me. And that's what wired me to be who I am. And the only people that really mattered to me were my grandparents because they they instilled in me the only things that are wholesome and good. Rick Navy man took no shit. Yes, sir. Don't sleep in on the weekends. Get up. Help me move these picnic tables around. I had a business where he built picnic tables and Sold them for cash, and I would do the deliveries with them. And you know some of this already, but they're the only two people I wish. I hope they can see me right now. I hope they can see the person I grew into and how I tried my best to pour into all of you. Because I wish I had this coming up. I try to be, and I don't think of myself as a superhero. I don't think of myself as a rock star. But I try to be the very thing I prayed I had growing up. Somebody to look up to that really genuinely wanted to see me succeed because there wasn't a motherfucker that wanted to see me succeed. They were all waiting 
for me to fail so they can come around and like hyenas and fucking laugh in my face. And I knew it. And I did everything I fucking could. Multiple jobs, worked on weekends, fucking studied my ass off. Ever did, I excelled in. Everything. Martial arts, yep. Weightlifting, yep. Businesses, yep. Trading, the fucking best, baby. The best. And there ain't a motherfucker ever going to be better than me. That's how it's always been. But what pushed me here was the fact that there was nobody, nobody, not one motherfucker said, you can do that. Everybody said I was going to fail. Every single person said I was going to fail. Well, <laughs> being the person that I am, all these things that would otherwise be handicaps in other people's eyes, mental illness, I used them as strengths. I have obsessive compulsive disorder. Okay. I'm going to put myself in fucking charts until I figure this shit the fuck out. Nothing else matters but this. And yes, I was willing to let relationships, family, everything fail around me until I got this. First marriage, fail. My children, I was not the best father. They were provided for, but they didn't have my time and my attention. They'd be talking to me about what they're excited about. And I'm looking at charts, nodding my head like I heard what they said. I didn't hear a fucking thing my children said to me. I was a terrible dad. Terrible. So you see me as someone that's amazing doing this. But none of you would have paid what I paid to get it. And I'm not proud of it. So because of all that guilt and shame, I live my life like this and I've been doing this since 2010 where I literally come out here and just do it because I think it should be done. And I wish people wouldn't have sold my shit and gave me a case of the ass in 2016 because I would have loved to be able to say, I never went out and sold. I never did this. I never did that. But guess what, folks? I'm the biggest I've ever been right now. Right now, the biggest I've ever been. And I could sell millions, and I don't want to, and I don't need it. And that's the biggest testimony anybody could ever have for not needing to do it. But some of you young men want to do the very things that I fell victim to that fucked up everything for the first half of my life. And I didn't see it coming. And you don't see it coming. The things you're trying to do for image, attract all the wrong type of people into your life, you don't want that. You think you need it and want it right now, like that's going to matter to you. Anybody that comes into your life with that type of shit because of things you have, they're superficial. They don't genuinely love you. They don't fucking think that you're a cool fucking friend. They're just around you because you have something they can't obtain on their own. And maybe you'll let them drive your cars, you know, sleep in the fucking house and Pretend like you're your best buds and maybe some of your attention will cause them to have an image and they can grow. Look, look at all these guys. Look at these young guys. They they pal up with one another trying to get clout to build their own image up instead of just doing what it would take to be a wholesome individual on their own merit and their own steam. There they are. They arrived. I have a lot of respect for people that go on their own steam and do their own fucking thing. But these team mentalities, these IML type guys. It's, it's pathetic. And they're all lacking 
the very same things that I was lacking because that's exactly what I was. I was one of those kind of guys when I was in, in my 20s and I had new money. I thought, well, shit, my own fucking parents didn't want me. So it's going to be easy for me to get friends, girlfriends, hookups. All I got to do is flash some cash, pull up in my nice cars. It's easy. And it was. It was very easy. But it was fake. They didn't give a fuck about me. They didn't only really care about me. They just wanted to see what they can get from me. Gucci bracelets and watches. Rolexes. I used to shit on everybody to one of my friends. So yeah. If I asked you to get me a Rolex, would you get me one? Yeah. No way. Yep. Let's go. Boom. Done it. On a dare. That woman I had my oldest son with. There, we wouldn't go on an airplane to a destination she just named off the top of her head. Hawaii. And Hawaii didn't work out. Couldn't get a flight that next morning. Bermuda, we did. And we were in Bermuda the next day at 11 a.m. No, that's not a big deal. Okay, it's not. But that's the kind of shit I did. Because I wanted to prove to everybody. Prove, prove, prove. Because that, that transaction gave me the response of validation. Hey, it's real because I proved it. Look at this. So I've given you all the proof that's necessary. I've given you all the tools to do what I do, show you what I've done, proved it. Students are doing it. Some of them are doing better than others. And there are some that are failing, and that's the reality of it all. You're not all going to succeed, but I believe all of you are capable of succeeding. Do you have what it takes to do this? I don't know. I don't know what you're contending with. It's like I had so many things I was contending with. I had a lot of things that would have been viewed as obstacles or barriers. And I had to find a way to turn that stuff into an advantage for me. And I used to sit in my, my room <laughs> with books piled up all around my fucking ass. And I would have the Rocky theme, you know, where he's he's training and he's you know doing all this montage bullshit. As a young man, I used to do that shit. And you young guys should probably laugh your ass off. Yeah, I do the same shit. I play these certain songs and I'm, I'm playing Eminem. You know, I'm up here and I'm doing all the bullshit. You know, look, I get it. You got to do whatever you got to do to get yourself motivated. I had to dig into some fucking dark shit to keep me motivated because everywhere around me was broke ass motherfuckers that had a toxic view on life themselves and everyone else. And here I am trying to come to the point where I'm not working. Like I'm not working for these fucking people that literally are not better than me. Just because you went to fucking Harvard, just because you went to fucking Yale and you done this and you done that and your parents paid for this or your fucking athletic ability put you through school on a scholarship and now you're in a position of management over top of me, you think that fucking makes you better than me? Who the fuck are you, dude? You wasted time in school. Fuck off. You're going to stay here. You need that paycheck. The fuck if I need it, I'm making my own paycheck. They're all still fucking working. All hoping they to get their fucking vacation approved. Fuck you. I'm on vacation 24 fucking 7. If I want to go on a vacation and go tomorrow, right now, I can fucking pack my shit and go. There isn't a man or woman saying, hey, you got to go to work tomorrow. That's what motivated me. Fuck working. I am not fucking lazy. You all can see I'm not lazy. There ain't a motherfucker out there in this industry putting out more than I put out. I am a over-fucking workaholic. I will fuck everybody to death. This was going to be a short fucking lecture. A short little discussion. Remember that? Because I give a fuck. I give a fuck. I care. I want you to succeed. 
you have taken the time to sit down and you are giving an ear to the things I'm saying. I have what works. I have that thing that everybody fucking wants. And I'm laying it in your hands. All I want you to do is do the right things with it. That's all. Be mindful where you received it from. That's it. But I said earlier, I got off on a tangent. Go to Amazon and do a search on smart money concepts. And look at how all these people are writing books. And look at all the shit that you're seeing in my mentorship videos. That's within their books. And you don't see my name. Oh, he's bitching about his name. No. It's not about me. That's not that's not what this is. Because when you listen to my testimony, you know who I'm giving credit to. Because without him, I can't do anything. But you see these kids out there trying to make a name for themselves real quick, put it out there in writing. And none of them have an, a, a correct description of what an order block is. And that's the reason why I've done what I've done with order blocks. Because all of them are going to look real stupid, real stupid, when I put these books in your hands for free. And you see exactly what an order block, what makes it an order block, why is it trustworthy, and why they're not going to stop working one day. It has nothing to do with banks, okay? Uh, they go down into this down closed candle. They call it institutional candle. And, folks, listen, stop calling uh, runs on liquidity, liquidity grabs. That fucking is irritating as shit. I don't want to sound like a snob, but that sounds like ignorance. Liquidity grab. No, 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 no. It's a raid on liquidity or a purge. That's it. You can sweep that liquidity or when it engages it, it just uses it as a speed bump. But these, these guys out there literally have taken everything in that mentorship stuff that you're getting in the core content lessons. That's why I've done it. It's for the people that have sent me emails in my, in my group that are paid. But I've let, you lost a lot of my respect. I, I, I love you as a mentor, but I, you really fell down a lot of notches in my view of you as a person. Okay, I'll be fine with that. Now go over to Amazon and look at what they've been doing with what you paid for. That's why I'm doing it for free. Because those same lessons that's in my private group knows not it. You had the experience of sitting with me every single day telling you where the market was going to go. Using those concepts, you could do what anybody would want to learn how to do. But they bastardized it and prostituted it and put it out there and tried to make it like the, they created it. But none of these kids can do what you see me doing. And that's why I came back to Twitter to shut the mouths of all the bullshit artists out there. So you're welcome to say whatever you want to say. And, you know, you're an asshole, you're a prick, you're arrogant, whatever. I don't care. I had loose ends and I came back to Twitter to make sure I tied them all up. And it's funny. Everybody has a loose tongue when I wasn't around on Twitter. And now I'm back here, and everybody's lost their tongue. Their Velcro balls dropped off. I could trade better than so-and-so. Really? I'm coming out here daily. Wouldn't you want to have a mentor that does this? Now, you might not like the delivery, the tact that I use or don't use. But that's just not me. I don't like to be refined 24-7. It's impossible for me. I go off the rails sometimes. And give it enough time, <laughs> I'll go off the rails. I know where I'm going in the end. I know where the destination It's proof bill. I got receipts, baby. I got them all day long, every week, every day. And you have the capability of doing the same stuff. And that should be exciting. That should be encouragement to you. And you should not be trying to do these toxic things that are not going to bring you what you're hoping they're going to bring you. If you're trying to get attention, 
you're doing it wrong. You're going to do things that are going to motivate you for all the wrong reasons. And when you fail, as normal progress shows, failures are all part of this. Losing trades are part of it. It's all part of the learning process. And you can't avoid it, and some of you are trying to avoid it. These things are going to be the catalyst for you to be impulsive, to try to get a reaction from other people, because you need outside sources like I did when I was 20 years old. I needed to be validated as a young man. I needed it. My father couldn't be a father to me. And I literally, I saw my dad less times than I have fingers on one hand. Think about that. Now, I know some of you were birthed into this world and you don't know your father and you never were around. And I get that. I'm, I'm in the same situation. That's who I am. That's me. And several men stepped in in different stages of my life and played dad for a short period of time, but nobody longer and better than my grandfather. And I wish they could, you know, I wish I could hear him tell me he's proud of me. That That is something I can never get. And that motivates me. That drives me. I would love to hear my grandmother say, I'm proud of you, Michael, what you've done with yourself and how you help others. I, I do that. I do that all the time. I think about every single day before I lay my head down, thinking to myself, I wish they could just see it and that I didn't amount to the pieces of shit that every one of my family said, because that's what they were all stuck in that mindset of just going to work, get a mortgage. If you were lucky, not all of my families have homes. They, they, some of them are renting places like my own mother who didn't want anything to do with me. She had something. And thank your mother, you know, like, hey, look, you know, I, I think you're going to do well. Keep, you know, keep pushing. None of that shit happened. None of that. <laughs> None of that happened. When I talk to you, remember, most of what I'm saying, in my mind, I have my children. So my audience right now has been my sons and my daughter. But because I feel passionate and I mean it from my heart and you're hearing this, it feels like I'm talking right to you. And that's what makes me as a mentor a little bit different because I'm not blowing smoke up your ass. I'm not using rented MT4 servers. I'm not talking about things that happened that I didn't push a button in. I didn't pretend about a story or a backstory or an origin of some kind of horse shit. I live this stuff. The things I tell you, they're real. The people that were in my life, real. Where I came from, where I learned these things, real. The experiences and the testimony I gave that some jerk down in Texas claims to be a Christian, but makes mockery of. And I have no shame in a tearful testimony that's real. I'm a human being. I'm real. I'm not AI. I have feelings. I have a temper. I have limits to my patience, and I had to endure a lot of things that I know most of you wouldn't have done. And if I wouldn't have been plagued with OCD and bipolarism, all these things that you know are very hard to manage every day. Like it's very difficult being who I am. It's hard to. It feels like there's a thousand things in my head, fighting to be the first in line all the time. And I can't do a good job all the time consistently in managing which one gets to be in the front row right now. And if you don't know what that means or don't understand what that means, just think about when I'm talking to you like this one. I'm all over the place. I can come back to a conversation that I started 25, 30 minutes ago, an hour ago, and come right back to it like I didn't pause from it. And it's very hard to learn from someone like that. I'm aware of it. I'm aware that I'm not an ideal mentor because of that. So I, I try to encourage you to do things a specific manner and in, in, in studying under me because I'm aware 
that I'm not the best mentor in that regard. Um, I have a lot of limitations. Uh, I'm not as eloquent as other people, but I am absolutely the best. And I don't care if that body you hear, I am the best. I am the best, period. And I'm willing to teach you. I'm willing to show you what it is that I do. I'm giving it to you. And I just, you know, want our community to just remember that. Not kiss my ass, not worship me. You don't need to be thanking me every day. You know, I appreciate it, okay? I appreciate that you, you say it, but you don't need to. You know, showing up every day and just, you know, putting the time and effort in and then show me your results. That, that is how you thank me. That means, you know what? I hear you. I listened to what you said. I put the effort in behind it, and here's what I've done with it. You know what? Fucking A. That is the shit. That's the fucking thank you I'm looking for. That means that's my time. And I, I, I've already been proven I haven't wasted my time. Obviously, I have a lot of students that have done very, very well. And I'm hoping that the ones that are still struggling can get it for themselves. I, I want that to happen for them. And sometimes, you know, it doesn't work. And it's not because of any lack of trying on my part or validity on the results of these concepts because it's there. But it's just like it was for me. My first six years, man, it was hard because it was me in the way. There was just stupid shit that I was trying to do. And once I removed all that stuff and got out of my own and stripped it down to the simple things, and I know it sounds an oxymoron because you look at all the things I got going on and the people that hate on me all the time, they'll say, oh, he's got an excuse or a model for everything out there. I fucking do. <laughs> you know, I mean, I already told you I did. I'm, I'm showing you fucking evidence of it. I'm pushing a button. Hello? And I didn't come to you and say, I am trading. Just look at my YouTube channel. There's lots of different things you can do. You have all these other educators out there, and I'm quite certain there are some educators out there that make money, not just selling, but you know, trading. But they're not going to be as precise as what you see me doing. And that's just the way it is. Okay? And I'm not trying to piss on them because there's a lot of very respectful mentors out there that know I talk like this, and they don't tell them, you know, talking shit. You know, they probably think I'm full of shit. You know, I'm a braggart and, you know, whatever, this, that, other thing. But if we want to compare apples to oranges and oranges to apples and sit down and show what we got, there's no comparison. How do you, honestly, seriously, folks, how could you justify looking for anything else when perfection has been shown to you? This is the market. It's been cracked, deciphered, in a language that's not easy initially to learn. But once you understand the language, you can't escape it. It's infectious. It makes you feel, well, like studying is never enough. You want to get a hit off of it every day. And every time you learn something new, it's addictive. It's intoxicating because you feel that empowerment growing. It may be exactly right in your hands where you can go out there and use it right away, but you see it. It's growing in you. It's growing in your understanding. It's growing in your awareness of it. You're seeing it in price. And it's an, an encouragement. And that's all part of this process. And I had to go through that by myself. See, my uncle didn't like the fact that I was making money. See, he made money with luck. One flash pan move in the sugar market in the 80s. And he bought his condominium, and then he couldn't afford to keep the condominium because he couldn't trade. He had one hit wonder. But then here I am renting a bedroom, room and board, $50 a week, and I'm killing it. And I'm thinking, he's going to be proud of me. 
I mean, after all, he encouraged me to go to school to be a computer programmer and information systems and computer science and, you know, start trading. Richest people in the world trade. Futures and all. That's what I heard when I was 15 years old all the way till 16. And finally, I just told myself I wasn't interested in the stock market. When I'm, you know, where I was dealing and showing him that I could call a market, I noticed that everything I would say, he would be a contrarian. And I, I seen in him that he just wanted to be right and me be wrong one time. And I didn't understand that. I was like, Uncle Stan, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you what I'm doing with real money. I'm in this with real money, and you're telling me your opinion. And it's diametrically opposed to what I'm actually doing with my own money well, every single time. Like, you're resisting learning from me. And it's just you and I in this bedroom. Like, I'm to you when nobody else can see or hear what I'm saying, and I want to share this with you. And he resisted me. Just like a lot of these fucking trolls are doing that same thing. My own family members still will not sit down and learn from me. And I would literally sit down with them, phone one, until they fucking got it right. My own children, <laughs> my own fucking birth, blood of my blood, you know, flesh of my flesh, children live off the fat of this stuff. And they still, <laughs> they still will not take the initiative and say, you know what, I'm, this is what I want to do. I don't understand that. Like, it's, it doesn't make any sense to me. Like, I don't understand that. And here I have all these people, you know, I got 340, almost, four, almost 343,000 registered followers to the channel on YouTube, which I am absolutely blown away by. Most of the comments on the videos, though, are made by people that are actually not subscribed to the, to the channel. So I'm often wondering, like, you know, how many people really check me out? Because I almost got 3 million views again for this month. I had over 3 million views on the channel last, last month. And to me, like, that's, that's insane. Like, I, here I am, this, you know, simple guy from a hick town, <laughs> Middle River, Maryland, and this, to know that all you people around the world, all of you, different walks of life, the simple fact that you even know my name, that blows me away. Like, that's incredible. Like, I'm humbled by all that stuff. Like, it's incredible to see how fast our community has grown without any marketing whatsoever, no advertisement, no nothing, all by word of mouth. And that should be a testimony to what it is that you're learning. And once you're good at this, you've heard, if you were like in my age bracket, we, we came up hearing about the turtle traders and you know what they were able to do and how everybody wanted to be a turtle. Oh, I wish I would have had an opportunity to train with Richard Dennis and, and be this and be that. And, and that's, that's cool. I even thought that too. I said, man, I wish I could have been a part of that. Well, you're in something like that right now. Like, you're here. I mean, you're listening. And I know this is going to rub the wrong way on a lot of you. But you're listening to, again, you're listening to all these folks that you read about in books. Like, you are now hearing the person that upset everything. And every form of technical analysis is going to be changed because of all this. I'm promising you Everybody that lives longer than me, you're going to see this stuff written in books, and it's going to change the whole landscape. And that's cool. That's that's neat. Like, I would have wanted to be a part of this type of community, too. It's neat. It's like the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen and Gentle Ladies. Don't get upset. It's just a title I reached in my mind. And there it is. But I really wish I would have had something like this coming up. It would have been such an encouragement. Like, I wished for something like this. And I was like the same, same type of guy. I get people on America Online, hey, let's let's create a message board for just people that want to trade the commodity markets that, you know, let's do this. And it's just like, I'm talking to myself. Nobody gave a shit. And now if I say I'm going to talk about something or I do a video and people are asking me to come on their channel to talk to them, 
I don't mind talking like this because I can be myself. But when I'm like being interviewed, like it's it's uncomfortable because I I, I don't obviously be, be this loose with them because I'm on their channel and I'm, I'm more mindful and careful about what it is I'm trying to say because I, I don't want to come across, you know, <laughs> uh, uneducated and, and vulgar, which many times I come across like on these rants and things. But I'm real. I'm not trying to be something I'm not. And I'm, I'm as genuine as you can ever imagine someone being because, like, I don't have to keep track of lies. I don't need to keep track of bullshit. Like, it's, it's why you hear me saying the same show all the time because this is my life. This is me. This is, this is it. But I'm constantly blown away by how blessed I am to be in this position. Like, I am absolutely honored and blessed that you would see me as someone worth listening to. And how all of this came to be and all the people that came into my life, how the Lord touched me and put a gift in me and an understanding in something that I know that had his hand not been in it, I never would have been able to get where I'm at. And it doesn't matter who came into my life and who presented opportunities and who tipped the hand and pulled the veil back, okay? That still wouldn't have mattered. All those things were so complex. When I first looked at them, I didn't understand what I was looking at. And I prayed, I asked. I said, give me the understanding. Like, it obviously was presented in front of me for a reason, so let me understand it. And if I understand it and you give me that understanding, I will spend the rest of my life sharing it like a ministry. I'm not going to be perfect. I'm, I'm human. I mess up. I'm not going to talk eloquently all the time. I have mental illness. Like I have things that I'm plagued with that I have to wrestle with. I'm not a perfect human being. I'm not a superhero. I'm not the upstanding mentor that you have imagined. I'm a real guy with a real life, a real family, and sometimes that family is dysfunctional. My kids don't listen, just like sometimes your kids won't listen to you. And it frustrates me as a father. It frustrates me as a mentor. It frustrates me as a public figure because I would want nothing more than to have my, all of my children come out there and just run aces on, on everything and say, here, we're going to continue your legacy, Dad. That would that would be amazing. And I don't I don't have confident that the, the confidence that that's going to happen. And it, to me, it's perplexing. Like, I don't I don't understand why. Like, it should be easy for me to be able to put that together and it happens. But my kids always tell me this. Uh, this is a lot harder than you make it seem, Dad. When you sit down with us and you say what is going to happen and it happens, it, it looks real easy, but they can't seem to do it. And it's just, it takes time. It takes an investment in time. And a lot of times that's going to be an overwhelming odd for the majority of you. And some of you are like, this son of a bitch ain't shut up yet. <laughs> Does he ever shut up? Not when I'm awake. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, when, I, when I'm awake, I'm, I'm going to talk. But I only shut up when I'm asleep. And sometimes I talk in my sleep. So there you go. But anyway, I'm looking at the clock. And I know my wife sees me again. <laughs> Just to paint the picture for you. I'm sitting out here in the parking pad in front of my home in my pickup truck. The air conditioner's on. The windows are all steamed up with condensation. And I'm looking at the radio and the time says 12.06 a.m. And I'm going to be real honest with you. I got a good, I got a good four hours still in the gas tank. Like I could literally keep going, but I'm going to purposely find a way to close it right now because I know some of you probably have to probably tapped out by now. You, you, you know, like I, I can't I hear this. This is not going anywhere. But I just wanted to just make sure we understood each other about today. I'm not trying to invite you to 
feel confident that you're going to be able to go out and do that too. And none of you, if you've just started training with me this year, if you've put yourself in front of the lectures and are giving me your ear, like these sessions here, don't fall victim into thinking that you're going to be able to do that. Not that you can't eventually, because everything I did today is literally taught in my teachings that are being laid in your hands. Now, does that equate into you being able to do it? Again, no. But you'll understand if you study price action and that certain things that you've learned in these lectures, placing them together with experience, seeing it happen every single week, every single day, every single month, quarterly, you'll see that these things repeat. And you'll know when to anticipate certain things, like the market maker sell model, market maker buy model. They're all parts of a greater whole. And I don't want you to lose sight of just because I did that today. Let it be a goal for you, you know, down the road. But that should not be the sole goal right now. I've got to get like that and trade on FOMC days. Don't Please don't do that because if – you took that from what I did today. That's why I made sure I was honestly, I was, I was thinking about not doing it at all. Like you didn't even know I took that trade today. You have no idea I did it. And then I was like, okay, I have to at least remind them before I put it out there. Hey, look, just know why I'm doing this. It's it's not meant for you to as instructions to, hey, look, this is what you should be doing. It's not like a, a veiled, you know, co-signing of trade FOMC days. That has not changed. I'm telling you all, don't do it. It's not subliminal messaging. Uh, it's just, I treat it just like a non farm payroll. You don't have the skill sets to read it. You could get easily caught up on the wrong side, and it can run away for you before you can really you know, fix it if, if you're not disciplined and you don't have a stop loss. And like some of you don't have a stop loss. I see that many times when you're showing me your charts. You can't do that stuff in a, in a day like this because it will it'll, it'll undo you real quick. And once that scar is on you, it's real hard to work through that. And I have deep scars from things that hurt me in my 20s in certain losing trades and certain accounts that roasted it. I still feel that today. And I'm 50, you know, three decades ago. Well, not really wasn't three decades, but, you know, 26 years ago, I can, I can feel that all over again. Just, you know, I don't need to look at the journal entries to, to relive. And you don't want those kind of war scars because they hinder you. I'd love to know how much better I would be if I wouldn't have put myself through all the toxic shit that I did. Like I endured stupid shit that I put on myself thinking, oh, I, I figured it out when I really didn't figure it out yet. And I was so eager to be better than what I really was at the time. Because I needed that validation. I needed that feeling of accomplishment, arriving, not being relegated to the status of mediocre, which I feared. I had anxiety about being mediocre. And that's, you know, I mean, I'm boring in my delivery. I'm boring in my long, you know, like this bullshit. <laughs> Like, get to the point. Well, the point is, is you know, this is hard shit, and you, you need somebody to be honest with you and tell you you're making dumb decisions if you are doing some of the things we talked about in this discussion. If you're focusing on those things, they're all the wrong things to focus on. And knowing that they're the wrong things is important so that way you don't waste time and energy. And listening to a couple hours long of an old guy listening to how he fucked himself all up and held himself back and telling you in all honesty, if I wouldn't have done these things to myself, how much better am, am I as a trader if I would have done less of that dumb shit? Like, I didn't have anybody telling me I was off course. I didn't have anybody saying, dude, you're doing some stupid shit here. It felt right at the time. 
just like it probably feels right for you when you put your fucking over leverage trade on without a stop loss because hey you know you got away with it the last two times so <laughs> let's try to do it on fomc and then you get your ass handed to you ruins you completely you know and you can get to a point where it it does you in and you can't do any more trading anymore because you're totally afraid you might open up another account but you cannot trade after that you'll do dumb shit and subconsciously because you can't stand the pain of not knowing what to do you'll start taking stupid little dumb trades and that will over time blow that next account out and that way that way you're you're removing yourself from it because subconsciously you just want to be out of that pain I have done that to myself too. It's a it's a weird feeling. It doesn't make sense to someone that has never really traded with live funds. But my second year, there was a one account that I had and I was literally on the verge of feeling like I had figured out everything I ever needed to do and then all of a sudden one trade, one losing trade put me into a series of drawdown. And over the course of a couple of days, I, I blew the account out. And it's because at the time, I didn't want to be patient with myself and give myself time to just work through that drawdown. So I just look death by a thousand cuts. I literally just sat there and just kept getting in trade after trade after trade after trade. Trading in an account, mind you now, Every round turn was a hundred bucks. That's theft. <laughs> That's that should have been odd. Okay. Each trade was a hundred bucks per contract. They call it a full service brokerage. Oh yeah, you can get service fully. <laughs> Deeply too. No lube. But I did this subconsciously. I don't I didn't know it at the time, but looking back at it now knowing you know, more about myself and psychology and how I think. I purposely just did it because I didn't want to wait for the next trade to set up that was valid. I was so worn out with the waiting, the discipline that was required. I was like, you know what? It's easier for me to just this run the account down so that way I don't have any excuse. I can't be in front of the charts because I have no reason to be there because I have another account. Now, I know there's somebody listening that has done that to themselves, but they probably never thought about that until it was explained to them just now. Like, it, like you probably thought about it, but as soon as you start thinking about it, you dismiss it real quickly because it's uncomfortable. You never heard that kind of shit from any podcast or any trader, but that's the real shit. <laughs> that's what happens. When you live this stuff and it warps you, when you thought you were going to go out there and own the world in your second year of trading, didn't know shit, didn't know anything. You get tricked into thinking a couple winning trades is equating to skill and it's not. You got to know what you're doing. And I demonstrated this year that there's a way to do this. And it could be extremely profitable. It could be extremely precise. But it's not easy. It looks easy. Doing it for a long time. But once you know how to get out of your own way and you trust the rules, it is easy. But getting to that point, trusting yourself to get out of your own way and following the rules, that is hard. It is very hard. It takes so much discipline. And I can't articulate it in enough words or emphasis that really grabs the, the, the sheer essence of what is required to be in that state of mind to be this consent dialed in. But you all are capable of coming there because if you have not taken this away from being under my wing this far, I've openly admitted that I have several mental illnesses. I'm not afraid to say it. I'm not ashamed of it. It is what it is. Anybody that is long enough knows that I exhibit all these things. If I can do this, there's no reason why you can't. 
Like you have, you might have one or two things that I say I have and wrestle with. So what? That doesn't mean you can't do this. You may not have money. You may live in a country in Africa. You may be in an impoverished impoverished nation. You may have even more uh, disadvantages than I had. It doesn't change the fact that you can do this. It just means you're going to have to work harder than the other people. And everybody in America, regardless if you are living on fixed income or you're on subsidies, because I'm on subsidies, I have guys that are in prison right now. <laughs> They're listening to this. Shout out to you. You guys are crafty. Cell phones in the fucking cells and shit. But hey, respect. ICT's every fucking where. You can't wait to get on the outside and do this shit. That's awesome. I hope when you get out here and you and you achieve and you reach out, reach out to me. Let me know what you're doing. I would love that. That would be an encouragement to me as a mentor. And if I'm a a, a, a catalyst or a, to you know, turning your shit around for you and, and getting you in the right direction, man, what a blessing. What an honor and privilege that would be. Because if I could get my dad out, because he's doing two consecutive life sentences plus 20 years, and that's not even counting the time that he got when he broke out of the Maryland Penitentiary in 83. He faked a heart attack. He got himself a revolver, stuffed uh, chambers with paper, so that way when he pointed the gun at the guards, it would look like he had bullets in it. And he swallowed a handcuff key. And I know this sounds like some Tom Clancy bullshit, but guess what? You can Google that. It's all on the fucking internet. Michael Joe Howington, Maryland State Penitentiary. Prison escape. He faked a heart attack. When they got him in the van, he put the gun to the guard's head behind the cage, and they said, he's got a gun. And they opened fire in the van and the uncle my best friend's wife's uh, he got shot in the head instantly dead and my dad caught around in the chest and he still has the bullet lies behind his heart and he can't do the operation because it would kill him well he picked up more time from that so it's hard to beat two consecutive life sentences plus 20 years and then you get more time for trying to escape <laughs> so uh, yeah he turned 70 years old in May and I always said that if he ever got out, you know, I would pour everything into him trying to learn how to do this. But his health's failing. He has several strokes already last year and this year. I'm sure he's probably not any better. And when the COVID stuff happened, you know, nobody was allowed to go see anybody. So all visitation stopped. And he, he lost you know, a lot of sight and his ability to write. So he can't write anybody anymore. So I don't honestly, he could die in there and I won't know. Like I, I won't know. And I just I think about how I have students that were in prison and in jail and they, and they got involved in what it is I'm doing. And it's changed their life. Like they, they view themselves differently, have a little bit more respect about themselves as an individual. They're making better decisions. They feel more empowered and not trying to be something that led them to get themselves into trouble. And they can feel like an upstanding citizen and be respectful and also be proud of who they are because they're doing it on their own steam and fucking right. That is something to be proud of. That's something to be proud of. Cause I know if my father got out and he was younger, not 70 years old, I don't think he'd get a, a fair shake. You know, he would have done his time, paid his dues, Okay, I know some of you have been like, oh, he should have been killed. He, they had him set for a gas chamber, but Maryland stopped doing the uh, death penalty. But he was slated to get the gas chamber. And I guess God saw fit to not do that. But he's going to pass away in those walls. And the fishing trips that he promised that I'd have with him, they're never going to happen. And you know, that shit made me salty as a young man. I, I wasn't going to prove. And I know coming out, you know, I put myself in my own prison when I was younger. Emotionally, psychologically. And I know how it might feel. I've never been in prison. I went to jail, you know, I got locked up for driving a car with the tags on the <laughs> wrong, wrong vehicle. And uh, I didn't have my license on me. So because, you know, 
they had to make sure I was who I was. I got locked up, spent the day in jail, and then got out. But that wasn't fun. And I can imagine how, you know, being in, inside, yeah, that sucks. You can't do this, you can't do that unless they tell you. You finally get out here. And now, if you've been in there for a while and you come out to the world the way it is now, it's fucked up, ain't it? And if you can find a way to carve out your own uh, existence with what I've done here, man, that's fucking awesome. That's awesome. I mean, there's no limit to what this information can do for someone. And I know it's easy for a lot of, you know, walk around with all these advantages. You know, maybe you didn't make the decisions that put you in jail. Maybe you didn't make the decisions that, you know, cause you to lose your freedom. So you, you, you have a lot more advantages as someone like that. But isn't it admirable for someone to devote time and energy into something like this and make it on their own steam and watch them transform themselves into an upstanding, productive citizen that no one can say, hey, we give you a free handout. Fuck your handout. Fuck all that. Just give me the fucking skill set and watch me fucking rise. That's, that's to me, that's commanding respect. That's something that anybody should have fucking respect for. And some of those men and women in my community. And I respect them. I think that's fucking amazing. And they earned that themselves. I didn't give them trades. They did that shit on their own. That's credit that they fucking earned. So none of you have an excuse why you can't do this. It's a choice you're making. Or it may be a series of choices that are leading to you not doing it. But you're doing all these things many times subconsciously. And I'm just challenging you to take inventory. Think about what it is you, you do on a day-by-day -day basis, week-by-week. Week, and how many times are you thinking about negative thoughts? And are you acting on them? Many times you don't realize that you are. You might react verbally to your spouse or your children or your friends and coworkers or whatever, and you snap at them or you say something shitty because you just thought about something negative. That stuff wears on you. And when you're in the market, if you don't have control of yourself, think about next time you're in a live trade. Do it with the least amount of leverage and take inventory. How many times you think the trade's going to turn on you? And put a check mark. We're in a, like, make a column. Negative thought. Every time you think about it negatively, oh, check, check, check. And at the end of the day, right before you go to bed, everything that you thought negatively, count how many times that you put a check mark on that. Now, obviously, you know, is it practical for you to be having a piece of paper and a, and a pen doing it every second? No. But I'm sure if you did just part of that as an as a experiment for yourself, you'll see how toxic we as humans are to ourselves. And that shit will ruin you as a trader. You got to go in with every reason to believe that what you're doing works, number one, that you trust it, and you're doing the shit at the right time, and you're not trying to force something because you don't like how you feel right now because somebody offended you. Somebody didn't give you enough attention. Someone didn't give you respect. Someone thinks that you are not where you should be in life or that they're better than you or they do better than you or they have more than you. All that shit, that's a negative thought. And that kind of shit is being pacified by these young guys that get out there on the social medias and they put their lipstick on for social attention. Cars and you're, you're compensating. You know, growing up, and I'm sure it existed before I was born too, but growing up when people had cars and things like I have, um, and like we see on social media, they would say, oh, he's compensating. He must have a small dick. <laughs> I, I don't think that's the problem most times because I can speak candidly and tell you that's not a problem for me, but I can tell you this, 
I did compensate when I was a young man because I needed to be validated. I needed that. I needed someone to look at me when I was 20 years old. And yes, I was new money. Yes, I needed it, that that shit wasn't a dream. I'm living it. And that's what these young men are doing right now. They put these images of themselves out there with all these cars and such. You know, uh, I'm not here to tear them down, you know, whether they pay cash for them or whether I have to lease them because if they're leasing it, they're getting the best treatment. They're getting complete write off if they bought them out in cash. And that's dumb. <laughs> that's, that's real fucking stupid. But putting that aside, they're compensating. Because if you really are comfortable in your own skin, you won't mind talking about your frailties. You won't hide them. If someone asks you, you'll share them. Say, yeah, this, this is how it is, is I wrestle with this, or I overcame that. That was a problem for me in the past. And you don't try to mask it with these superficial things like cars and image things, jewelry, clothing, drip, okay, that kind of stuff. The more you see that, the more I know that that person is hurting inside. But they'll laugh at things like that. Like if we were talking, if I left a, if I left a comment on their social media as who I am, as in a circle trader, um, pr- they would probably block me. They would probably block me because they wouldn't want me in the heat or smoke that comes along with that kind of shit. But Number one, I don't like to do those types of things, but you know that you could probably list about five different gentlemen that are out there constantly, and the only thing you see them doing is their cars, where they sleep, what they wear, what they have on their wrist, or what they have around their neck, and maybe, maybe over the last 50 videos, you might see two trades in their their some exorbitant amount of, of potential profit, which, you know, whether that's real or not, whether it's a rented MT4 server, I don't know. I don't know. But I know there's a dude on YouTube. His name's Raphael, I think Palmdale or something like that. This guy's making a million dollars every day. And if that's true, he's better than me. Think about that. <laughs> now we know <laughs> that ain't true. But the point is, these guys, they do that stuff. Just like I did when I was 20 years old. And that's why I, I, I troll them. I think that's, it's sad because I know I wrestled with that garbage. And when I came to terms with all of it and said, you know what? Yeah, fuck it. If nobody likes me, fuck them. I don't care. I, I got to live in my skin. Like, I have to love who I am. And I have to love me with all of the fuck ups. You know, I, this is me. And there was a time in my life I hated me. I felt like I wasn't enough for anything, for relationships or success. That's why I did that podcast on my SoundCloud, Are You Deserving? Because that actually was a revelation that I got personally for myself. Because there was a time when I didn't feel like I deserved to be successful. Like, I didn't believe I deserved it. I didn't come from a rich family. I didn't come from an affluent family. Yeah, yeah. A college educate, yes. I did computer science, yes. I can you know, do all these fucking things, but all that stuff right now, like I could not seriously, I could not code anything in any of the languages I learned when I was trying to save my own life. Like I can't do it. Like it's weird. Something happens when you're like in your forties. Like shit starts breaking off. Like and I have forgot a lot of stuff. And when I read some of my journals, I'm thinking to myself, damn, I forgot about that. What the hell? And it's just, I don't know. It's something you got to experience when you get older. But I know that these young folks that are listening to me, you, know, you hear this type of stuff and you're like, oh, this old dude. This old dude used to be a young dude. And I used to do all the same silly shit that you were trying to do right now. And it never, ever got me anywhere. I wasted money doing that stuff and time. And if you take your time and you just build yourself up and invest all that energy in yourself, you will thank me and yourself for doing so. You won't invite all the toxicity. You won't 
you won't be living your life for the acceptance of others. And that's how I did my 20s. And it got me fucking misery. Like, I didn't enjoy my money. I hated it. Like, I, at, at, at some time, I, I wanted to fucking be away from it. Like, I didn't want to do it anymore because I couldn't enjoy it because my oldest boy's mother was constantly trying to be in my pocket. And that sounds, you know, hearing it superficially like that, it sounds like I'm a deadbeat dad. I'm not a deadbeat dad. And my kid was with me six days a week. The only day that I didn't have him was on Thursday night. But I had him every day. And everything was paid for. Nothing was in, he didn't need anything. But I was so depressed at that time in 1995 and 96. I just didn't want to do anything. I could feel myself slipping into depression. I was embarrassed. I was ashamed that, you know, I had a child with a married woman. And I was ashamed that people that knew me growing up, you know, I didn't come from a lot of money, but I came from a family where our word meant something. You know, our convictions about things, you know, is who we were. And referred to as a, a good guy, a good boy when I was a, a child and such. And I just was ashamed of, you know, being wrapped up in all that bullshit because I thought I was with someone that was single and they weren't. And it just, I was catfished. I mean, it really, that was the way it was. Like, I was absolutely taken back. I, I didn't know what I was getting involved in. And yes, I'd take ownership of and getting her pregnant. I mean, I had a part in that, absolutely. It, but how it happened, it was, it was wrong. And I could sit here and bitch and complain how I was a victim. But that was how I viewed it. And it caused me to just hate everything, hate me and hate my life and hated trading. I didn't want to be successful. I didn't feel like I deserved to be successful. I was ashamed of what I got wrapped up in and I cut everybody off. The only person that was around me was my oldest son, Cody. And that was my only source of happiness. That was it. And when you see him sitting at the, the table some of you actually thought that that was me as a kid learning how to trade. <laughs> no, that's Cody in his pajamas in an apartment that I was renting. And I, would, I was renting that apartment when I could have afforded, man, a lot. But I had to live a lifestyle to try to beat this woman in the courts. So I lived a life that looked less than. And I put my whole existence on hold because of a, re a relationship with a woman that I should have never got involved with. If she would have been honest with me, I never would have, I never would have laid down with that woman. I never would have done that. But, you know, I was attracted to her. She was good looking and we had fun together. And I was a young man and hey, you know, I own it. I, I made a mistake and I had to deal with it but that also had an effect on my relationship with my son it still has so like we out of all of my children and he is the one i have the least contact with and we had a rough time or he he felt i was the worst fucking father on the planet and a lot of things that he remembers are fake memories of shit that didn't happen because he has a separate household over there and they would talk about me all the time. And, you know, when you're a child and you keep hearing negative shit, you know, you're going to remember that as a memory. But I had him all the time. <laughs> I had him all the time. He's got his ass beat three times. Three times. I don't know. You young guys, you just don't realize how fast shit can go upside down with stupid choices and stupid, stupid decisions. And... Making a lot of money does not make you exempt from it. It just makes you a target for it. It makes you very susceptible to fake relationships, friends that aren't really your friends. Like I have one friend that I know is my friend friend, 
and he's been my friend since preschool. And he doesn't trade. Which doesn't fucking make any sense. <laughs> doesn't make any fucking sense. Like, dude, what the hell are you doing? But, you know, if it ain't in you, it ain't in you, you know? But I have talked to you a long time tonight. And I had a great deal of fun talking and thing, shooting the shit with you. And if we were hanging out, you know, at my house or if we were at your house or if we were in some public space just shooting the shit, this is how we would talk. No act, no front, no pretend. Just this is the way it is. And I don't give a shit if some of you didn't like this. I don't give a shit if you felt it was a waste of your time. If it is, you know, whatever. Don't go and listen to anything I do in the future. But this is the real stuff. This is going to impact you. And it's outside of charts. It's outside of trading decisions. All these things are going to bleed into what you do in your trading. And if you have a toxic thing going on in your personal life and you can't overcome that, it will manifest in your trading. And it'll, it'll take you out of this industry and the game itself before you have a chance to succeed. So don't invite all that kind of stuff with image. You know, if you start making a lot of money with this, keep it to yourself. And some of you might think, oh, you just don't want anybody else getting attention. Okay. Try it and see. And once you see how toxic it becomes, it's a drain. Like, it's not empowering. Like, you have to constantly keep up with an image. What do I got to keep up with? I know how to trade. I can show you another trade every day. I don't need to keep up with the last car I showed I bought. I don't need to keep up with what house somebody else lives in and what house I can afford to buy. I mean, I've already done it this year because, <laughs> well, you know, I had to set somebody straight. But the point is, is I don't need to do those things. I'm 50 years old. What the fuck do I got to prove? I'm married. I have a beautiful wife I love. And gentlemen, if you have a wife, if they are willing... Uh, for my 50th birthday, it's probably too much information for, for some of you, but yeah, fuck it, we're talking. Um, she went and had a, I think it's a, a boudoir photo shoot done. She went up to Pennsylvania, and the lady, she's a photographer, uh, she went to her home. I didn't know she was doing this. Man alive. These are beautiful. Like, they, she looks stunning in them. I mean, yeah, there's a few of them that, you know, I can't share, obviously, but um, all of them are done so tastefully, and she just looks so beautiful in them. And when she gave me the album and showed me, you know, what it was, I wasn't expecting it. Let me tell you something. I love my wife. I am surprised that she'd do something like that because she's always been very... Like, that was the last thing I ever would have expected her doing. But she wanted to do something really you know, memorable, and it was my 50th and such. But I don't even know the fuck I even brought this up, by the way. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, we're friends, right? We're talking shit, so let's, you know, let's let it all air out. I am so thankful for this woman. I'm so thankful that I don't have to worry about her wanting to be with me because I have things. Because in the beginning of our relationship, she didn't know shit, nothing. And then when she started questioning, you know, how I have money without working for it, she started asking questions like, you know, are you doing something illegal? Like, are you, you deal drugs or shit like that? And I was like, um, no, you know, I have investments and things like that. And, my aunt made a point to tell her, you know, he's a millionaire, he's got this, he's been doing that, and yada, yada, yada. And she didn't believe it at first. And then she pinned me down and said, like, do you, do you really do this and do you really do that? And I was like, okay, let me show you what I do. So there it is. But once, once I finally told her everything about me and what I'm – able to do and what I've learned and what I've been involved in it's very liberating because it's it's scary like when you get fucked over by a woman 
okay, that you thought you were having a relationship and you're like, wow, I'm attracted to this woman. I'm having a great time with her. This whirlwind romance. It's, you know, if you ever seen the movie Nine and a Half Weeks, that was literally me in the 20s with my oldest son's mother. That nine and a half week type thing, it's weird, but that's literally the first time I saw that movie. She, she and I watched that together. And I think she was trying to pattern our relationship like that. Because it was about that much time before, you know, everything blew up. But uh, I didn't have a, a, a real good trust factor with women. With my first wife and then and this one here, my oldest boy's mother. She was married and hid it from me and we were running around with one another. And it, it got to the point where I was like, you know, I never go to your house. I mean, you've been to mine. Well, you know, why don't we go to yours? Oh, well, you know, I like to sleep. And I was like, what the hell's going Something's wrong with this picture here. Like, something's wrong. But anyway, it's just wonderful to be with a wife that I have now. And we got married in 2001. We got together in 1997. And... I don't have to hide anything from her. And the other day I shared a tweet. We were out taking a drive. And out of the blue, she just came out and said, you know, I have always been jealous of all these people that you talk to. Like tonight, I'm sure she's upstairs asleep right now. And she probably went to bed thinking angry thoughts. And then maybe she wrestled with it and said, you know, I know why he does it, you know. But she still went to bed without me in the bed with her because I'm spending time with you all. But she told me in a ride the other day, we're not driving around. And it's weird. Like, we take the same three different drives. And it's like, what the hell? Dude, you're supposed to be, like, this fucking ICT guy. You're this boring fucking dude that has all these fucking cars that you barely fucking drive and you do the same three routes of driving all the time. And sometimes we'll take our dogs, put one of the kennels in the back of the pickup truck and we take them for a ride and they like to see the cows and they bark and bullshit. And you're probably like, what the fuck is this guy going on about? But Hey, I sucked your ass into this. Okay. So you're going to sit here and you're riding this whole thing out until I close this off. Okay. That's the way this is right here. You don't, you don't turn it off because you don't know how I'm going to end it. Right. But we're, we're out here riding, and uh, she goes, I, I know I know, you love doing what you do. It's, I've seen it. In the beginning, I thought it was a fad, but it's like, this is, this is you. Like, this is you love doing this. And in the beginning, I hated it. Like, I was jealous of everyone that you were spending time with. In fact, I thought you were having an affair. Like, you were talking to someone else, like another female. I'm like, what the hell? And she goes, but I, I know now. There's a lot of people in the world that are looking at your shit. And I don't understand what the hell you're talking about still to this day. Like, she can't understand what it is that we do. The way she sees it, it's a video game. Okay, that's the that's way she says. She dismisses it like that. Just says, oh, it's just a video game. It's all bullshit. You know, it doesn't mean anything. For her to tell me that she was always jealous of that. Number one, it hurt. It just cut me. I'm like, fuck. I already think about this as it is. And I've already shared that with you in other video streams and lectures and series on my YouTube channel. But when she said that uh, she was jealous of how much time I devote to all of you and doing this, but knowing now how people share their affection and adoration for the time and energy and effort that I put into it, she goes, I know it makes you happy and it's who you are and that makes me happy and it's worth it. That was very moving for me because it freed up a lot of uh, guilt because I'm, I'm me and I wrestle with a lot of things. And if I get an idea in my head, no one's stopping me. No one's going to say, please don't do that. And it's, to me, very 
comforting for my wife to, to finally let me know this. And it feels like, you know, I feel like a piece of shit as a husband and I look back and I'm honest with all of you and them and tell them all the time. There was many times where I knew I could have stopped. I had made plenty of money that day. I don't need to do any more trading. But my obsessiveness says, beat the fuck out of it some more. Why? Because I need validation. I need that. Because I can't get it because my grandfather, who was my dad, can't give it to me. So it drives me. That's the wiring I have. I'm hardwired for that. And she gave me one of the greatest gifts. A man, a husband, a teacher could ever have received. Like she, she gave me the validation that I've been seeking. Like all of you could thank me every day. You could all pour all kinds of appreciation and thank yous. All Listen, I do appreciate it. It's not needed. I want you to understand that is not going to scratch the itch. Because you're not my grandfather. You're not my dad. You're not my parent. But my wife, my best friend, my lover, my life's partner, she gave me a gift in that. And maybe it's something you might not have shared, you know, in your own social media circle. Maybe you would have kept that private. But it was monumental to me. Like, it was like a milestone. Like I felt like a big weight came off my back. Like this desire, this need that I've always felt every single day, even before you knew me, before you even knew who the fuck I was. I lived my life like that. When I had jobs, I worked so that way I was better than everybody else. And I worked my ass off until I got that recognition. And if someone got a case of ass about that or jealous, oh, yeah, you know, whatever. I would just be more into whatever I was doing to be better than everybody else. That's how I am. Not because I want to be competitive because, you know, because of the, the na nature of competitiveness. It's not the competitive nature itself. It's the fact that that underlying need to be validated that stems from my childhood, that's what motivated me to be them. And I don't feel that anymore. It's a weird feeling. It's like I feel like I'm free. Like I don't know how to put it in words where I just feel like I don't have that chain around me anymore. Like I don't have that. I don't know. I don't, I'm, I don't know the real words. The, it, it escapes me. I just know I feel happy. Like I really feel happy. And I want to make this woman the happiest woman in the world. I've, I've obviously been, you know, a faithful husband. I never would have done anything outside of a relationship. She knows that. But whatever she would ask me for right now, and she's not the kind that, you know, that would really do that type of stuff, even though she is excited about the new home. But uh, whatever she would ask for, it would be nothing. I would give it to her and more. And it feels good. Like, it feels good. Because I, I, there was a lot of times, you know, when I'd be working on videos for you or the, the mentorship group, she, she would pass by and see me. And sometimes she would just shake her head. And, like, you could see the disdain in her. Like, like this, when is this shit going to stop? Like, I never spend time with you. When is this shit going to come to an end? That was the look. And I would see it. And I'm like, fuck, let me, all right, let me, let me shortchange this video and I'll pick it up on the next one. I, I knew it. I was aware of it. But I still kept doing it. Because it's who I am. And she understands because of all of your feedback. That feedback that you shared in my YouTube videos and on Twitter. I was surprised, number one, that she would even look at it. Because she always avoided it. And sometimes when... Some of you were doing those video testimonials and you know, showing your appreciation. I said, hey, can I see your faces? Like, I would love to see some of your faces and, and, and put a, 
they face to a voice. Because it's one thing to type something out. Anybody can type something out. Anybody can do that. I wanted to see a real, a real person, a real face. And a lot of you did that on YouTube. And some of them were very moving, brought me to tears, brought my wife to tears, my kids to tears, just showing your, your appreciation for what you've learned and what you're able to do now. That's awesome. And, you know, her looking into that, it first kind of felt weird. I was like, why all of a sudden you're in? Like, I was thinking, shit, she wants to learn how to fucking trade. Man, I got a fucking trophy wife. Fuck yeah. My wife's going to be a fucking trade. No, she ain't trying to, she ain't trying to, she's not trying to trade. But long story short, yeah, like that. She just, uh, she could, I just see what they give you and I can see how that would motivate you. And I'm happy that you get that and it's been worth it. So I just want you to know that I appreciate the love. Well, adoration, respect, thankfulness that you have extended to me. And I don't, you know, I don't take that for granted, especially now. Like I am so thankful that she made her feelings known to me because you know, I could have checked out and never found that out or heard her ever say that. It wasn't like she wrote it down on a card. You know, it wasn't like she, you know, sent it to me in a text. She was in the, the vehicle with me and we were driving and she just came out with it. And it moved me. You know, I don't, I mean, some of you younger guys would think, oh, well, who's a fuck? It's, it was a big deal about that. But I've been with this woman since 1997. And she's always had animosity towards all of you. <laughs> she, she literally had animosity towards all of you. And she didn't like the fact that I was doing this. She wanted me to stop all the time. And because of me coming out publicly and making, you know, a lot of the lessons, you know, she, she literally would tell me all the time, stop teaching because these pieces of shit that are selling your stuff, okay, like they're, they're just making a mockery of it they're they're making money off of it and they're diminishing you by doing it. i said they're not diminishing me they're advertising for free they're getting paid a commission by selling it yes is it wrong i believe so they're trying to get credit for something they're trying to do something they shouldn't be doing but you found me because of that exactly how i designed it they all worked for me every one of you resellers i was your pimp you like that? You all worked for me. You worked every corner for me. I didn't have to pay for advertising. You did it for me. And all of you fine folks that are to now, you have them to thank because they did a good job drawing attention to how to find me. I didn't have to do any of that type of work. You came to me because somebody talked about something that you found leaked. Oh, this guy can do this. This guy can do that. And now you've tasted it, you've seen it, and now you're encouraged by it. But my wife was never a fan of any of you, none of you. Her feelings were, they're only telling you the nice stuff because they want something from you. As soon as you stop doing this, they're not going to give a shit. Well, a large degree, I agree, most of you will, will just move on. And that's fine. That's what adults do. I'm not looking for you know, constant handshakes here. I made a, a promise. I made a promise that if I was gifted with this, I would spend the rest of my life doing it. So I'm doing that. But for her to say that, and it's not her nature to switch up like that. When she changed gears and says, hey, look, I can see it now. Like, this is you. Like, yeah, I always knew it was you and it's your personality and it's your passion and it's your life. But I can see and hear. And, like, when she watched that young lady, Hannah, and to, she goes, it's odd hearing people say your name and talk about you. Like, she sees me as the husband. Yeah, she knows I do this stuff, and she she knows that these charts do some squiggly shit on there, and money comes into a bank account, and bills paid, get bought, and she don't have to worry about any of that stuff. But when she said she listened to this young lady, and the reason why is because 
my daughter and her were talking because I said, look, to my daughter, watch her channel. Hopefully this will inspire you. She, uh, she and my daughter were talking about it, and I guess it was intriguing enough for her to want to watch one of them. And she says, you know, it's weird hearing people talk about you like they know you. And she goes, you have a lot of videos. I said, that's nothing. That YouTube channel is little. Like my library of videos and mentorship is like over a thousand. Like it's a lot. It's a lot of videos. But she goes, I can see all of the comments that people come in behind and say, you know, they say really nice things about you. And she's aware of Vinny. She's aware of other people that have made, you know, an attempt to to troll me, discredit me, and, you know, say terrible shit about me that ain't even true. But, you know, I, I guess it comes with it. But it really took a toll on her. And I guess, you know, she needed to have some kind of a – hold on one second. It, 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 she needed some kind of a, a, a confirmation that there's another side to that. And when she saw all of – because she's never been actively trying to look into any of it. But when she saw all the feedback and stuff – and seeing it not just on Hannah's channel and not just on my channel, but in the Twitter, you know, when I put out something, you guys, you really come to life. And she saw that. And just, it feels good. It just feels really good. And I just want to let you know that I appreciate everything. I appreciate the feedback you give me. I appreciate the tweets that you say, you know, tell your wife to say, you know, tell her that we appreciate her patience letting you do what you do for us and to me that means a lot like i i appreciate that because like i said she's never really been a fan of any of you and don't take that personal but just think about your own spouse look how much time look how much time i'm talking to you right now four hours non-stop no commercial breaks <laughs> You think I can't? I'm the fucking energizer, brother. It has nothing on me. Nothing. I don't have a bottle of water here. Nothing. I could still go. This battery will die before fucking I stop wanting to talk. Okay? But I just want you to know that I have such a wonderful experience. It has given me motivation like you can't even imagine. And I'm wondering if she's thinking she shouldn't have told me this because... <laughs> She's like, oh, shit, now he's going to do more of it because it's almost like I told him to go do more when she didn't. She just said, I understand why you have lived your life like this. I understand now why you do it, and I'm thankful and I'm happy that, you know, you get what you get out of this. And she said it's been worth it. That part right there tells me, yes, it hurt her. It took from her, which I always were was aware of. But uh, for her to basically acknowledge that it was a, a suffering on her part, a doing without, that she feels like that was her participation in it. And she's thankful that you know, that was her role of just allowing me to do it. Because let's be honest, folks. I mean, if she would have put her foot down and said, listen, it's this or me. As nice as you people probably are, I would have been like, fuck off. See you later. I got to go. And that's just a really real. Everybody out here listening to this would have done the same thing. Like if it's a choice of your wife or your husband or doing this, you know, I love my wife more. And I really love her now. And I just, I am so in love with this woman and so thankful that the Lord gave me her. I'm just, I'm in a, I'm in a, a really nice point in my life that every moment feels important. Like like today, everything I was doing today, I was thinking to myself, like, man, and maybe it's because I'm 50, you know, maybe because they say, you know, life really begins at 50, you know. I'm just really appreciative of everything. And if you ever wonder if I do appreciate any feedback. I may not like your comment because you say, oh, yeah, yeah, you're the goat. I don't like your comment because you said that. I understand what you're saying. I don't want 
you to refer to me as that. Not because I know you're, I, I know you're not calling me an animal. <laughs> I just, I hate that term. Like I hate it. I can't, I have a disdain for it, but I already know I'm the best. I don't need you to tell me. So just that we, we you know each other. You don't need to go forward with any kind of continuous thing about it. But a simple thanks, that's enough. That's cool. But showing me your results, that's how you thank me. So tomorrow, work your ass off and bring me some results. Until next time, be safe.